everybody, welcome to Back Issues I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Let's do Fantastic Four the end. It's the end of the Fantastic Four. We already did didn't the last we, yeah, Fantastic say, Four story. Did we already story. do this? Yeah, this we talked familiar. about it. No, we didn't. This is not a redux. <laughs> Fantastic Four the end, written by Alan Davis and drawn by Alan Davis with uh, inks by Mark Farmer. This is in the noble tradition of the, the end conceit. Presumably the last Fantastic Four story. Obviously none of them are. It's the end only hypothetically even from the prospect of where Fantastic Four was at the point that it was written. Well, okay, so <laughs> yes, but also... If if Sue Storm died right. subsequent to this, yes. then it's like, well, this wouldn't be the end because she's in it. She's in it. Well, yeah, but then they just go, yeah, no, we didn't, we're not acknowledging that. Or she came back to life presumably sometime between whatever yeah, happened so there and book. this, so we would do it. Oh, she was, a, she was another scroll. Yeah, whatever. Who cares? <laughs> I'm not even going to address it. Uh, this is more like an Elseworld story because it's just a fun alternate universe Fantastic Four tale and then it shoehorns the the end conceit at the very end as oh. a kind of like, oh, it's the end. I would almost argue that none of the the ends really end, mm. except for Hulk the end. That is a pretty that, definitive ending. Yeah. And it's pretty miserable. But this one is not. Uh, <laughs> and I call it an Elseworld story because this is made by Alan Davis, who also did Justice League The Nail and Another Nail. <laughs> and those are just Elseworld stories where Alan Davis is like, let me just play with the Justice League. Let me just do something fun and interesting with the Justice League in the future. And that's what this is. It's the same thing. It's basically Fantastic Four The Nail. <laughs> where it's like- Yeah, I've got an idea. This is the same idea. Ah, oh, but it's for a different company. And it, well, and I think that like radically changes the idea. Like if you say, do the nail to the Fantastic Four, it's gonna be completely different. That said, it is not, like the nail, where the nail disrupts continuity and changes things, like the butterfly effect. This is more just like, what if the Fantastic Four got to age or go forward, or or actually embraced conceits suggested on this very show. Oh. So, I love this story, I think it's really fun, it also looks great. Alan Davis knows how to draw these characters and make these characters look fun and fantastic. No capital F meant. But the idea is that the story takes place kind of in the future. Like right now, as we are reading it on the first page, it's like a little bit of time has passed. Mm -hmm. Like enough distance has passed between now of 2006 when the mm -hmm. story came out and whenever the story is happening until we do another time jump. Just two time jumps in the story. By the way, uh, we also talked about the last Fantastic Four story. This is the story that they did when Stan Lee was suing Marvel and couldn't do the last Fantastic Four story. And then mm. when they wrapped up that lawsuit, Stan did the last Fantastic Four story, but this came out. And yeah, I love that there are two of them because they both have their own strengths. And, you know, sure, you could say weaknesses, but I mean, like it's a Stan Lee Fantastic Four story. It, it, is, it, is, is it weaker than any other one or is it just inherent in whatever the text is? Like, it's just gonna be <laughs> silly and weird. Uh, but it's its own thing. Yeah, it's it, very it has much a separate something. scale that you graded on, and it's not this in any way, shape, or form. Hmm. But it is also just Alan Davis going like, "I'm gonna play with the Marvel universe, and only the parts I want to play with." He really wanted to work on the X Men for the longest time, and for a significant period, couldn't. Like he would get other books like Excalibur, and then inevitably he did get Uncanny X Men, and then quit after a year because what a thankless job. And <laughs> then also worked on the X-Men in the 2000s and didn't anymore and made this. And so he, at this point, he's like, it's the Fantastic Four. It's the first family in the Marvel Universe. It's a foundation of the entire Marvel Universe. I am gonna talk about other characters besides the Fantastic Four. And I'm gonna give like definitive takes on them in this the end of verse period. But I really don't wanna deal with the X-Men. So there was this thing called the Mutant War and there aren't any more. <laughs> and that's, they're all gone. That's not really a mutant war. That's more of a mutant genocide. Yeah. Well, but no, it's the war they all, about mutants. No, no, no. Not the but they all died, and so everything's better. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, that's controversial. That's not good. And, I mean, is it? I mean, okay. Wait, how can that possibly be? Because the X yeah, gene is just like the exist. human. Yeah, gene there should be new ones being born all the time. Evolving. I know, right? Mutant war, though. Mutant War. Yeah, the Mutant War. Yeah, mutant War. Well, the events, well, I'm just gonna hand wave you there. Yeah, well, you know, through the events of the Mutant War, there the are X no gene longer... was taken care of. Yes. 
Yeah, people no longer evolve. Maybe, well, maybe or, humanity, no, they evolve. Is, humanity evolves. They don't all evolve into having an X gene that gives them power. But a bunch of them were, oh, and yeah. now they're not. No. So I think, in my version, knowing nothing about what happened, oh, you don't even humanity's find out. final. You know, they fired the final shot. Oh yeah, which was a genetic virus that eliminated the X gene from all yeah. people. Right. So it can't come back. It's just done. Yeah. Uh, see, my theory was that apocalypse like exploded into a virus that like eradicated oh, well, the, the mutant genes. So, but Very again, similar. there's yeah. this is as nebulous as the Clone Wars used to be in a pre prequel world. <laughs> you could speculate for hours. It could be anything. And they and they give you no ammunition. Yeah. It's just oh, it's the Clone War. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. Clone Wars? Holy crap, that sounds cool. And I think there were clones in it, you know, given the name. Right. But that's all I got. Right. And, oh, and I know that Obi-Wan fought with Anakin in it. That's it. Right. Did he fight clones of himself? Right? Wow. Is, is it Obi-Wan Kenobi? Because he's one of many OBs? Is it that the whole universe was cloned and everyone had to fight their clone? What? Nope, it's none of those things. <laughs> Damn. It's a lot more disappointing. <laughs> It's actually the clone robot war. <laughs> they left out the robot part for some reason in yeah, the name. Yeah. Made it the clones. It's being actually the main thing. much it's more weird. of a droid war. I mean, we don't right. really care if we kill droids. Certainly not. And we wouldn't name a war after it. That's just every war we have. Yeah. I throw wave after wave of droids at wars. And, and the Republic won? So it's weird that they named it after their side. Like right? I would think you named it after the side you were fighting against. You kind of demonize them a little bit. Yeah, like bit. the the separatists should call it the Clone War. Yes. And the Republic should, should call, call it, it the, the Separatist War or the Droid War. Or the war. Droid War. Anyway, so the Fantastic Four are battling Doctor Doom, and uh, so after the Mutant War, which also featured Doctor Doom, so we know Doctor Doom was involved in the oh. Mutant War. I mean, it makes sense. Sure. I guess it makes sense for him to be involved in any large-scale <laughs> event in the Marvel Eventually, universe. Doom's going to yeah. show up. Yeah. How <laughs> does the Mutant War profit Latveria? Precisely. Right. So in the wake of the Mutant War, Doom has been left scarred and deformed. Oh. And he is also a cyborg and has extra limbs and stuff for him to trash the Fantastic Four. <laughs> oh, no, he's General Grievous. Yeah, right? <laughs> oh, no. And so uh, he's fighting the Fantastic Four in a big, awesome climactic final battle. You know, it's, it's the kind of battle that you'd expect in a story called Fantastic Four The End, where like, you know, Doom is a mess, so mm. we're assuming he's gonna die at the end. It's, it's a thing that I've always tapped into, where a character is horribly disfigured in either the end of Act Two or the beginning of Act Three, where I'm like, well, they're not walking away <laughs> in this franchise picture because right. they look too complicated. <laughs> you know, when Harry Osborn gets hit in the face with that pumpkin bomb in Spider-Man oh, yeah. 3, I'm like, well, they're gonna kill him next. Yeah. Because they're not going to put that shit on his face for another movie. <laughs> and I was vindicated. But yeah. Uh, yeah, so you're thinking, oh no! It's it! This is it! This and is the, it! And the Fantastic Four are fighting Doom. And so, here's the thing. And, so, and he's, he's fighting for keeps this time. He is, he's playing for keeps. And he, ta and he says at, essentially that. At what point this time in real, this story would ever want to believe that the Fantastic Four die in the beginning of the story? So Doom is upset because Reed ended the mutant war, presumably, or rather... What? Hold humanity out of the wake of the, the mutant war. The mutant war ruined everything. It was almost like World War III in Star Trek. Oh. Where uh, our warp drive could have conceivably been warp drive because Reed Richards realizes to pull humanity out of the brink of annihilation, he has to share his amazing technology with everybody. Like the ultimate nullifier. No, that's not his. He stole that from Galactus. That's not that's his. That, he that's proprietary. He has known that. No, but everything else, like unstable molecules, everything becomes free and available to everybody. And essentially, it creates a utopia. This is in the wake of the mutant war. Yes. Not the way that it was ended. N well, no, no. <laughs> it's no, not like he gave like, humans technology. And, and they, they used ended it to the crush mutant war. The mutants, okay. Yeah. Reed's like, oh, look at all these mutants. They're going everywhere and doing anything. What if I just gave them all of these weapons that completely annihilated the mutant gene? What would happen? I don't know. No, no. It's The mutant Thanks war happened. No. Everything got messed up as a result. And then Reed was like, I, I have no recourse. I have to give everyone my technology. And that right. will hopefully pull us out. And I think the idea was like innovation and imagination and, you know, the, the, the sudden declination of economies. Like, we don't need money anymore because I could make matter. You know, it's like, whatever. I don't yeah, have to, yeah. the, the clothing industry certainly was disrupted by the unstable molecules introduced in the market. But, uh, you know, <laughs> but yeah, it was I can throw things it. in the wash I, and yeah, not gonna shrink anymore. Exactly. Well, I don't even have to throw anything in the, I don't have to throw anything in the wash. That's gross. Right. 
<laughs> no, it, it bounced right off. Or my clothes rearrange their molecules to remove the dirt molecules. Whatever. Well, I don't know how it works. You know, this is plausible because in the wake of a world-destroying war, the fear of, well, I'm going to destabilize the garment industry. <laughs> is no longer That's, there. Yeah, well, uh, people are trying to eat. Right. And I'm not worried about like how Levi's is gonna survive right, like, this thing. Maybe this will cause worse problems if somehow people don't need clothes anymore. What's well, gonna cause mass unemployment yes. in that industry? And then, then it'll be like the Pandora's box. But it's like, no, everything's already destroyed. Yeah, everything's like, wrecked. You can't get any worse. Exactly. Just d try it, try yeah, everything. Why not? And so it gets better. And Doom uh, returns from having been wrecked, <laughs> finding that everything's better and they didn't need, you know, like monarchies and stuff. And he's like, what the fuck is this? And so he's like, I'm playing for keeps because the, because Reed, Reed like broke the treaty, the treaty of super scientists in comic books, which is don't share your technology with the masses. Like don't make the world unrelatable with your super science. You know, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's okay with the Fantastic Four as a flying car, but like if everybody has them, now it's suddenly unrelatable. I don't really know what I'm even reading anymore. I'm just reading right. a science fiction story. I can't really story. put myself in it. Exactly. Yeah. Also, there's no one inventing flying cars. I don't like have any bearing. I have no footing for this. Right. So Doom is upset, not metatextually, but <laughs> we are. And so he's like, this is horse shit. More or less, I don't have a freaking throw anymore and this is crap plus like i don't have an eye and i got sick i got a robot arm stuff like that i like look at me and everybody else is happy this is crap so i'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, not everybody else it. is happy all the mutants are dead oh yeah well they're well they're not alive no, enough to be upset or happy yeah they can't be happy or unhappy exactly so doom battles them and essentially what happens is Franklin and Valeria, the children of the Fantastic Four. Franklin's a little older, so like some time has passed. Franklin is, you know, probably a teenager. Valeria, maybe like twelve. Mm -hmm. And so they step in to help defend the family. And Franklin and Valeria's powers are such that like Franklin can do whatever, and Valeria can cast illusions and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, she's super smart. And so. Uh, Valeria conjures the image of a demon, which scares the shit out of Doom for a second before he realizes that it's the children and he knows their power sets, and so he immediately cuts through them and then just grabs the children. And then immediately the Fantastic are like, whoa, Doom, what the hell are you doing here? Like, those are kids! And it's like, okay, you put them in Fantastic Four uniforms. Right, they like, are trying to punch him, though. Yeah, right? Like, they are, <laughs> we are in a war here, and uh, you already signed the deal when you put them in action-adventure costumes and then allowed them to Be here fight. and fight me. Yeah. And Franklin is nigh invulnerable. Yeah, Franklin's yeah. a god. We're going to ignore that for a little bit. He can take care of himself. Yeah, Franklin should, should be, be able to. Well, he should be, but he's also a stupid kid. Uh, so uh, Doom is just like, nah. Franklin, Valeria, and Doom all go up, and they're oh. dead. Oh. oh, shit. And we don't know really what happened. It's just kind of like, finally, Franklin's <laughs> powers go amok, or... Doom decides to just self-immolate. We don't really know. It's just, it's real bad. And the kids are caught in the crossfire. And as a result, uh, the Fantastic Four's children are dead. And their greatest adversary is gone too. But like, who cares? It's our children that are dead. And that's the sad part. And so then we cut to some time has passed. Decades have passed mm. from that point. Which could have been an interesting Fantastic Four the end story anyway. But really, eh, two pages. <laughs> Let's get to the real stuff. That's the end of the Fantastic right. Six. Right, yeah. Now let's get to the four. Uh, but no, so, so... So is that happening before the Utopia starts? Yeah, well, it's already... It's on the verge. Like, Utopia has begun. Okay. You know, like, humanity and is Doom's getting better. Doom's not getting with the program. And Doom is yeah. not. He's like... Because Reed is trying to appeal to him like, dude... Like everyone's yeah, eating something. Well, right. like you're gonna be fine. Like you're a smart guy. We're working on new technologies. Me distributing my technology, presumably, it, and putting it in the hands of other people, like Wakanda and super scientists and regular people, will allow them to come up with ideas I never would have thought possible. So we're gonna see new practical applications. But you don't understand. The only control I have over Latveria is if it's kept in the Stone Age. Yeah, that's true. Everyone's <laughs> gotta wear tunics. <laughs> and they're gonna be making a living off of rocks. I I, I don't understand. <laughs> and and, and it's basically that's the. The idea is that Doom is just like this really pathetic, selfish bastard who's like, if I can't rule, then I don't want this world. Right. Um, no one should have, else should have it either. Yeah, but he's dead. And so we cut to decades and, later. And this is not a Doom bot. No, it's not a Doom bot. <laughs> we, we could go Doom bot with it, but we don't. We, we could even have like a whole asteroid full of Doom bots that are all like, Richards! But no. 
And because I think that would also get away from the narrative. Although I would say the narrative does meander and get away from itself <laughs> as it stands. That said, I do really love this story. I think it's really fun. It's also quintessentially Marvel and Fantastic Four, and it's Alan Davis just playing. Just like, look at my action figures, look at what they're doing, and oh, but you never saw this. And ooh, how does that work? Why is that a thing? Who, what are you asking these freaking questions for? <laughs> It, it's an Elseworlds story. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, well, okay. The what if is equivalent, but it's not what if. It's it's yeah. the end. Well, okay. It's a the end story. <laughs> so Richards is sad. Everyone's sad. But decades later, the Fantastic Four is disbanded. Uh, you might also notice that it says decades later, or rather, they refer to it being decades later. But everyone looks pretty much the same. And uh, they don't actually tell you right away. It's only, you start gleaning when they start talking about it because they keep referring to it like it was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Way more than five whole years. Right, and they don't and, look uh, older. So. And, and they don't really look older and suddenly you uh, get dropped in the middle of it and they're explaining it uh, and they start referring to things like the Methuselah Project. Uh, and you realize that everyone like- Everyone lives forever. Everyone lives forever, like Reed and so forth. Like after the Utopia, they developed like anti-aging Technologies. Okay, so it could have been hundreds of and years. Hopefully, they also sterilized everyone. <laughs> right. Because if oh. you no longer die, well, not everyone. Because you can still die from accidents. accidents. No, well, right. we have other planets, and we have this super science. So now we could start terraforming and colonization. I mean, I'll say this: hmm. being able to live a very much longer time, yeah, makes space travel actually viable. Well, that and also, like, we have super science and we have, yeah, we have super spaceships. Like, we could just go to Pluto. It's no big deal. In fact, we do. Uh, but, yeah, no, we're terraforming. So it doesn't matter. The population control isn't an issue. Uh, and so it's been a long time. Decades, they say. Uh -huh. It could have been 100 years. Who knows? It, yeah, it that is, would be 10 decades. Right? It's, it's been decades. Technically, that's decades. <laughs> 40 years maximum. Okay. Uh, but it's been long enough. So it's still kind of like you can conceptualize the technology. Yes. But even then, <laughs> don't forget, like, it's been, like, decades since we already distributed our super science. Right. So that also self-perpetuated and also people don't die. So people are taking their time. And so, yeah, no, we're prolonging the Marvel universe and the status quo, but we could actually explain how it works that way. Uh, Reed has essentially uh, gone into self-isolation on his asteroid. It's also where that final battle took place. Reed mm. basically just created this kind of like asteroid R, essentially, where he... Thank you for saying it. Right? <laughs> like it's, he, he works there and he does all of his super science and it just orbits the Earth. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the Fantastic Four disbanded, but it wasn't like a big, sad, Stanley-esque, ah, screw you, stretch out, I'm leaving. It was just kind of like people found their own places to go and they pursued them. Right, you know, they just like, moved on in their lives. Right, like, exactly. The Fantastic Four was a phase it, of my it, life. It, was, it, it was, wasn't, doesn't define my entire reality for all time. I mean, it will, because this is called Fantastic Four at the end. But, <laughs> oh, yeah, like, but also, no, I mean, was, you know what, sure. Uh, it can be both, because that happened a lifetime ago, mm -hmm. and it can happen again. Right. You know, I had my other lifetime of that having been a phase, right. and now it also is a life-defining experience. Uh, but so Ben isn't the asteroid, is he? What? Ben is not the asteroid. <laughs> this isn't ruins or something. Uh, but no, Ben. I went, just like you know, be like cured. enlarged him, and then yeah, and then I can, well, he died. him out. <laughs> <laughs> Stretcho, let me die. That'd be amazing. Oh my God. That's an idea. <laughs> but. No, Ben took Alicia, had a family, and moved to Mars because Alicia used her powers, you know, of like manipulating matter and infusing life into it and whatnot. And they just go, oh, she had a power, that, like Valeria's illusionary power is kind of like, what? what? And, and so Alicia being like, oh, she could, she, she's helping with the terraforming process. What? On like a larger scale. What does that mean? Shut up. Nobody asked you. Uh, I want to know how she had kids. With the thing. Are the, they rock people? They are not rock people, but they do have powers because he was hit by cosmic rays, as the I song see. says. Uh, but no, uh, when we see Ben again on Mars with Alicia and his children, he's the thing. But we can see that now he can revert to Ben Grimm and uh, the thing at will. Nice. Yeah, Reed fixed it. Yeah, he finally got around to fixing it. Yeah. Well, I got well, time. Well, we don't have to fight Doom anymore. Well, I can't deal with those it. stupid children either. Well, yeah. Yeah, that, no, but that's kind of what I was thinking about. You this were always book. the like, ultimate babysitter. They couldn't hurt you. It's true. <laughs> yeah, now that I don't have to worry about it, I guess I'll fix it. But uh, but also, you know, like part of Ben Grimm's personality is like you're a giant rock man, and it's useful and fun for you to be the thing. So yeah. why not just thing out when right. you need to? Just be like yeah. the Hulk. We're well, gonna make just it a little bit more not likeable. angry related. Yeah, it's just yeah. it's at will. 
And, uh, and, and it's, that seems to suit him just fine. But all of his pathos is gone, mm. which is kind of fun. Except that now he's a little afraid to lose what he has. You know, like, I have a family, I got a wife, I got a life, I'm doing this thing. And, you know, I'm not just going to jump into the middle of... Like, I, 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 would, I would hesitate to say that we're retconning that Ben Grimm is such a brawler in the Fantastic Four because he secretly has a death wish. But mm. uh, he is slower to jump into the fray, you know... This well, he has something to lose. Yeah. And he had a second he's got a second chance at life. It's like that's oh, true. Oh, I mean, well, and he's been living it. You know, like yeah. the kids are in their like the kids are anywhere between like six and twelve. Mm-hmm. Uh, but And Reed can't stand to see them. No, Reed, Reed They're just <laughs> constant reminders yeah. of my own. No, there's actually all these people are pretty well adjusted, or at least they have normal human reactions to trauma. Which is kind of nice and refreshing. You know, it's the Fantastic Four. This isn't a Tom King book. <laughs> We're not just going to be sad for the whole damn thing. And okay. then someone dies. <laughs> Reed is on his asteroid and, uh, you know, he works for humanity. They, they, they dissolve the borders and governments and stuff like that. There's no more need for lawyers and judiciary process and whatnot because people aren't fighting. There's no more criminals anymore. Mm-hmm. There's no more crime. And so uh, Jen Walters, the She-Hulk, is on the asteroid with him. She, in the decades since they abolished lawyers, became a psychiatrist. Because why not? You know, people still have mental health issues. Let's work on that, too. And because she's a working woman. Okay. I I like the idea of her transitioning careers. So there's no more crime, but people still have mental health issues. Yeah. And people still get sad. Well, sure. But that doesn't drive anyone to crime. Well, they don't want for anything. They're just... Occasionally they just, sad. They just massively internalize it and like, <laughs> until it explodes. <laughs> yeah, but we maybe we have there. systems for detecting it. Ah, like we can detect and measure uh, on- oncoming mental episodes. Right, and, uh, oh, it's and like then future we, crime. Yeah, and then we send yeah. them to Jupiter. Yeah, no, they go to <laughs> the, the island. The dark uh, underbelly. The dark of underbelly of Reed Richards Utopia. utopia. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> no, it's a real utopia. It's just sometimes people get sad and yeah. they still need therapy. Well, like they're human beings. Yeah. You know, you want, you look at a Van Gogh painting, you're gonna feel something. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you're well fed and have a good job, okay? Yeah. Anyway, so Jen is given uh, Reed some kind of guidance because she's like, yo, like you work a lot. It's very nice, and he seems very driven. He's working on something, and you're like, okay, mm. he's working on how to bring his kids back. I get you. Well, that that's what he's motivated by. At least that's what I went to immediately. Uh, like he's just been spending 10 years work, 10, 20, 30 years just trying to figure out how to save his children and then realizing he can't. Uh, you but, bring your kids back the old-fashioned way. You make more. You make new ones. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then you can name them the same thing. It's been 30 years. Who cares? Mm-hmm. No. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I'll call you Franklin too and Valeria too. I, I wouldn't even bother. I mean, why, why introduce a question? <laughs> just be like, no, those were you. I resurrected you. You know, make it a grand, horrible lie. No, so uh, so Jen is talking to Reed about how he's like, you're, she's like, you're not facing your, de- you're not dealing with anything. You just live on the asteroid. You know, the Fantastic Four disbanded. And she's, he's like, no, they didn't. And she's like, um, I count one. Mm-hmm. And he's yeah. like, well, yeah, no, Ben has a family. He went with his wife to go help colonize and terraform Mars. Like, he's, they're all busy. Right, she's like, disband. And where's your wife, Reed? She pursued archaeology, and she's just been busy. And, and Jen is like, she hasn't been on the satellite in a year. Mm. The last comm link you had was a month ago. Right. So they didn't. They didn't break up. No. They're just, they're just kind of drifting. Yeah, like, they drifted apart. Exactly. Right. Johnny, for example, John. Oh, I just saw a page. Oh, you saw Namor. Yeah. Well, mm. of course. Uh, and it's funny because. You know, Sue decides to pursue archaeology uh, because she becomes essentially as driven as Reed, but in her investigations into ancient civilizations, uh, particularly Atlantean. And it could be that she's there just to, you know, get some some loving from the fish man down under the sea, but I, I believe it is not. And in fact, <laughs> it isn't because she didn't tell Namor she was going to be there. And when she does encounter Namor, she's like, I'm married. Like, please don't. And it's not like a Grant Morrison story. Uh, the only Grant Morrison Fantastic Four story where she does desperately want him. She's just like, hey, whoa. Mm -hmm. You know, like, yes, I do have an attraction to you, but like, I'm not going to cheat on my husband even though we're estranged. Mm. It's not dark. That's all I'll say. Like, we could could take it there and we will. It's it's the point that like, their marriage is not good right now. It's not great. Because they're going through things, or at least Reed is going through things, and she's like, look. Well, she's upset too. Her children were killed. But like, their, their marriage isn't the problem. Yeah. It's just that they're both sad and they won't deal with it. Or they're dealing with it in 
more driven in unhealthy ways. You know, they're both going at it and seemingly trying to tackle the problem. Like they're, they're both working on the ultimate anniversary gift. And they're not just talking with each other. You know, we're, I'm going to bring your kids back. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily think that's true. Because <laughs> Reed seems more like the kids are dead. And there's nothing we can do. And it's my fault. Whereas Sue is like, I'm going to get way into archaeology for no reason. <laughs> I'm going to distract myself. Yes. For but, the rest of my life, which is forever. And then you find, yeah, which is forever. And maybe one day I'll get over it and then we can get back together. But no, it's, it's Sue is on a mission. Reed has mandated therapy sessions. Like every month or so. <laughs> mandated by who? By himself, actually. I think it's uh, his, like, I need to make sure that I'm in check. I need to set a boundary for myself. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And so Jen is like, you know, you need to worry about your family and you got to talk to him and stuff and you got to you gotta take a break. You got to take a vacation once in a while. Mm. And Reed is like, yeah, 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 in a minute. And uh, he takes a call from Wyatt Wingfoot and Thundra, uh, who are together, presumably, because Wyatt likes big chicks. And they're in another area in space. And the idea is that Reed is essentially, and they, they kind of like build towards it, but it doesn't matter. Uh, Reed's trying to build instantaneous travel. Hmm. Reed has a time machine. Well, okay. And he doesn't go back and either get his kids yeah. or fix the Well, mutants. the problem is the time machine that he has is based off of Doctor Doom's technology, which doesn't work the same way that, like, Marty McFly's... <laughs> doesn't work the same way, and yeah. I wouldn't Dean dare use it. Yeah, I won't, Let's I won't give him credit. Exactly. He's the one that murdered my kids. Yeah, no. If you use Doom's time machine, you go back, and, and if, you, if you go back, you've created another timeline. But right, you can't change what you cannot change what's happened where you are. Yeah, and then I have to go into that timeline and kill myself, and then just and live there. Live yeah. there. Yeah, we're, no, I'm we're not, not going to do that. that. It, that's too dark. It's just that Reed is, and also Reed's like a realist. You know, he's mm. he's like, I live here. This is the consequences of right, my actions. It happened. It happened, and it sucks. But it's part of the human condition. Now, also, so is death, and I broke that. But never mind that. Forgetting it. <laughs> uh, so, so he's working on teleportation. Okay. And that's his. That seems to be his ultimate goal. It's like another. I, I think the idea is that Reed is like he keeps innovating. Like he created these things called pegs. They're personal environmental per, like generators that you keep on your person, so you can walk around in space, and you can like you can go in any environment, and you know it'll generate it for you, so you don't have to like worry about spacesuits and stuff. Uh, every time that Reed comes up with a new innovation, I think that's like his way of being like I'm making up for my guilt by trying to give humanity something. Also, when humanity became like super. You know, like, they can't die, and they have all this crazy technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the Galactic Council noticed, you know, like, alien worlds are like, okay, so the hotbed for super people is now flying around in essentially technology that approximates what we do. <laughs> it's becoming an issue. Like, it, 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 it's, it's already untenable when, like, one of them becomes the Phoenix, or when the Avengers show up and stop the kree Scroll War. Right. It's another one all of humanity could do it. That's a problem. And so... I mean, all of humanity are not superheroes. No, but, like, no. they can approximate it by not dying and being able to, like, fly around and be anywhere. Yeah. Or at the very least, they're, they're, they can be more like us. Like, yeah, they're, they're, they're like as strong as us, but they also have superheroes. Yeah, that's That's not fair. That's not fair. And so... <laughs> they uh, saw us with planes when it first happened. They're like, uh, it's worrisome... But, but it costs them an arm and a leg, and it's not that safe. It'll be fine. Yeah, and they can only travel like a hundred people at a time. Like it's no, that's that's trust me. And so they mm. created these kind of like quarantine stations around the solar system that prevent interstellar travel. Like we don't have alien visitors here, and we can't go there. So we can travel to the stars, but we choose not to. Whoa. We can go to all the way to Pluto. Okay. That, That's pretty far. But there's there's a little bubble around Pluto where it says do not cross. Yes. Yes. There's a okay. with the neutral zone is the Milky Way. So or the the, the, the solar system. The solar system. Yeah, right. our okay. solar system. Yes. Okay. So does that mean like we can't leave or we're just not supposed to? We can't. Well, no. We're not supposed to and the if you cross the barrier, people get like a ping. Right, you're like violating the agreement between Earth there and the There is a council. treaty that we have. Yeah. With other worlds. With other worlds. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yes, we could do it. We just aren't allowed to, and we have no reason to. Right. Like, you're going to create What's so good about Hala anyway? <laughs> right. So we've become... Um, Isolationists. Yeah. But only self-imposed and only because we don't have a problem. Obviously, we don't have a problem with integration and diversity, unless they're mutants. <laughs> but... 
Well, but there aren't any, so we don't. Yeah, right. It's hard we, to have a problem with something that doesn't no, no, exist. No, we can't. <laughs> right. I want to, trust me. I would if they were I here. I would if they could, but, but they're, they're not, not, so I don't. <laughs> Meanwhile, God. the Galactic Council's made up of like a thousand different species, and they're like, not humans, though. And it's like, all right. <laughs> no humans. And it's just like, we're, yeah, it says no humans. <laughs> there are <Love> one. <laughs> So yeah, uh, so that's that's the system, right? And it's okay. like f most people on Earth, are like, sure. Oh no, I'll never see a scroll. Right, I don't like aliens anyway. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> no, no, no they, they, they're past the uh, general the biases oh, right. of being Marvel characters. You know, the Marvel universe uh, uh, inherently is racist. Right. So well, once they should have a problem with it, then they should be like, "This is not no, fair." No, the, the, no the, yeah, the mutant war really beat the shit out of that. I see. Plus, like, once I guess they became, you know. Undying. Yeah, when people. they became gods, it's like whatever. they're like, well, like now I have to live with the consequences of my actions in perpetuity. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah, it's not even like. Oh, uh, maybe like, I should be better. Yeah, it won't. It's not like it's gonna be my kids are gonna inherit the problem. We're both gonna inherit the problem, and my kids are gonna have kids. So we're all gonna have to live with it. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I'll stop polluting, <laughs> and complaining about scrolls. So yeah, that's that's the that's the world we're living in right now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but there are Avengers. And Johnny Storm, now John, because he's grown up uh, and he's gotten past his kind of like wild card phase, mm -hmm. uh, is... I am Jonathan Storm. Yeah, he goes by John, but yes, uh, it's certainly not Johnny. And uh, he's a founding member of the New Avengers. Mm. They don't call them the New Avengers, they're just the Avengers. Uh, Tony Stark died a long time ago, like before that whole convenient Methuselah thing. Mm -hmm. But he transferred his consciousness into his suit and it's, he's always Iron Man now. There is no Tony Stark. Right, Tony Stark is a, Tony Stark is a body. He's that gone. It was buried a long time ago. Yeah, is there something in the suit or is it just the suit? It's just the suit. It's not a suit anymore. It's a robot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, right. it's a drone, basically, that, that right. Tony Stark can puppet. Uh, but every time that it breaks or dies, he just jumps into another one. He has, like, thousands of them all over the place. Mm -hmm. And so his consciousness just beams into the nearest compatible uh, right. suit. And he, he refuses cool. to get a new body, huh? Right? Well, well, they haven't, like, developed cloning technology, I guess. Like, they don't have, yeah. like, an organic body. I assume that they're working on it, or at the very least, they could do it. Well, we were going to, but then Krakoa died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> we, all, yeah, we have one way of actually making people come back from the dead, and only mutants could do it. Yeah, they were <laughs> mutants. And so we destroyed them. So, yeah, uh, so Iron Man is part of the Avengers. But so is uh, Silver Surfer, which I think is fun because Silver oh. Surfer also is an interstellar being who cosmically goes everywhere but chooses to stay here. Right. And, and it he's could a be Fantastic Four character. Wait, are there go. Inhumans still? There sure are, of yeah, course. So that was the Mutant War. The Inhumans all moved to Mars, like probably way before the Mutant War. No, I get that, but doesn't that yeah. mean you can just make more Inhumans with, you yeah. know, what detergent up? mist or whatever the fuck it yeah. is? Oh, yeah, probably. They don't really get into it. But the Inhumans are Fantastic Four characters, so they're in it. Well, and for whatever reason, humanity never, like, had a problem with Inhumans. Well, the Inhumans stayed in a hidden city, right. and they were always in a they place didn't like They did walk among us. Their uh, leader would have spoken up about it if he had any complaints, but he was silent the whole time. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> so you're going to the moon, yep. unless you object right now. I okay, don't hear so any. on the moon forever, yep. and you're not coming here. The eyes have it. Uh, no, so I'm so glad to, you agree. Thanks. But they, so they go to Mars and they and they live there. Uh, and in fact, like the the Inhumans have kind of like expanded. Like most of Mars is Inhumans, okay. and okay. also the Grimms, because Alicia is facilitating the terraforming process. Ah, right. Uh, and what's funny is they, that is to say, the Inhumans accept Ben because he's the thing. But when he's a guy, they treat him like a second class citizen because he's just some guy. He's right. like a gross human. Do you know who I am? Right. Well, then he transforms out. Like, oh shit! I'm sorry. It's hailed hero of Mars. Oh, the, 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 so the, they don't know what he looks like. Does, well, they, 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 he does, just looks like one of those gross. They all look alike. <laughs> but I does every inhuman humans. not look human? No, they do. But like, Some of them do. but the ones that do have to wear masks. You know, like crystal and even Medusa to some degree. Mm -hmm. uh, they wear masks and that is okay. And I think it's because the Inhumans who have a problem with humanity like to otherize humanity. And so they want to put like a hat on it or a mask on it that says like, you are different. You wear a mask that yeah. says that you are different. See, this shows that you're one of us. Exactly. Uh, but also, it's kind of like a throwback to their original designs when they used to wear masks. And the way they explain it in-universe is that, like, well, we used to wear masks. 
They're ceremonial. Mm. We're not doing it to make sure that people know immediately that I'm not a human being. Okay. And therefore won't be the subject of ridicule. Like the Grimm family is. <laughs> Interesting. Why does the Grimm family choose to live, I guess, because of Because of Alicia's her career. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And because it's like it's a paradise. Other than the, you know, well, racism, it, it's, it's, uh, it's so, pretty okay. It's already a paradise. So just what put is she masks doing? on the kids. I just, no, no, why should I have to do that? <laughs> I made this place habitable. Hey, you're here. You should assimilate. Put what? on the mask. I feel like that's kind of messed up. <laughs> the fact that you're not wearing the mask shows, you know why don't you just go home to Earth if you're not going to wear the yeah, mask? Yeah, You know what's weird, though? They never address it. <laughs> they don't actually solve this problem. It's just, it's, it's, it's just, world building. It's just letting you know that, like, like it's a utopia, but... There are problems! There's still some stuff That's why going. we need therapists and stuff. <laughs> okay. But why we don't need lawyers. And it's Wait, like, no, we it, do need lawyers. We need people advocating. Is there crime on Mars? Uh, they don't really get into it. We don't get into it. Well, it's just, it's a fun, crazy setting that Alan Davis can draw. That's it. <laughs> We're making way too much. Of Meanwhile, page Mars 10. <laughs> right. yeah, that's just, there's so much that's been introduced. It's so dense. Yeah. There's a lot of world building, and I think it's fun, yeah. and it's delightful, and also there's no sequel, and there never will be, so. It brings up a lot of questions that Alan Davis. Davis was not expecting. <laughs> no, he was not. He's just like, what? It's just fun. It's like, what do you care? Why are you asking? <laughs> It's an evil show you made. I don't care for it. People watch this? That's some. Oh, you're evil. <laughs> this is bad dislike. <laughs> this is the most dangerous show on YouTube. <laughs> Jen wants Reed to like take a vacation and Reed is ignoring her and she essentially just gives him the stink eye and then leaves. She's like, all right, this isn't working, I'll go home. Can't you just right. pick him up and like put him on a ship and force him to go someplace nice? Yeah, 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 yeah but he can, he's, he's stretchy. She he knows him, it wouldn't work. Also like, that's... that's he, that would just make him reject... Don't do that. Like, the concept of healing. Exactly, that's like, not... Like, oh, my therapist betrayed me by trying to force yeah, me Yeah, my therapist punched me in the face and dropped me in Tahiti. No. You can take it. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's what's happening in the world. Uh, so the Avengers are dealing with these anarchists who are uh, essentially committing like domestic solar terrorism. You know, like they will attack the quarantine towers. Okay, so they're opposed to the quarantine. People, there Wait. are folks out there who are opposed to the quarantine. They're rabble rousers, they're called anarchists. Uh, but the, the yeah. quarantine, is that like the edge of the solar system, yes. these towers? Yes, the, uh, the well, it's from one end to the other, although I think the sun is fine. Uh, but yeah, the uh, the Avengers are on Pluto or at Pluto because Pluto is one of the last ones that they're still working on getting terraformed. They're not ready yet, mm -hmm. but they're you know th that's how far along we are. It takes a long time. I'd also love it if the aliens were like, whoa, 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 that's not a planet. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't count as part of your solar system. You can't be out this far. It's like, come on, I can terraform it. <laughs> it was when we first established the solar system. We got to go by our rules of what the barrier yeah. is. I said there were nine planets, so oh. Well, but that is not a planet. That's not a planet, according to your own textbooks. So that's ours. What? <laughs> so we only get the planets? So you get our moons too? Yeah. No, 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 you can have the moons around your planet. Around your planet. Yeah, you can't have planetoids though. Yeah. We have planetoids. <laughs> oh, fine. Planetesimals, whatever yeah. they call them. Well, what, if a, what if an <laughs> asteroid hoves into our quarantine field? Is that then <laughs> our asteroid? As long as it stays well, As long as it's yeah. within yeah, our it's, solar system? When it's here, yeah. when it's if in it's your solar system. Before Uranus. Yeah. <laughs> That sucks. Or Neptune, you know, depending. Sure, of course. So, you know, Sue is doing her uh, investigations and essentially what happens in Atlantis or under the sea is Sue is really hell-bent on figuring out this ancient civilization and what they were up to. Namor has no reverence for his past or from his culture in <laughs> oh, any so way. Oh, so he's destroyed. Yeah, he's like, okay. but, it's, but it's dead, who cares? And I'm like, I, I, okay, I understand who Namor is. You know, she's like, it's fascinating, it's interesting. And, and I, I really kind of like this aspect of Sue. I was like, oh, that's kind of fun. Like just watching her, you yeah. know, look for her own curl and Neskers. And, uh, <laughs> but, but, and Namor being like, well, I, I think you should check out like, you know, my ancient relic, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and, uh, and she's like, get away from me. Uh, and then they get attacked by a tuma. And, oh. uh, you know, and, 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 and it's just like a too much just attacks because Alan Davis realized there were too many effing pages of people talking to each other. And so uh, Atuma <laughs> Wait, shows no, up. No, that's not Atuma. So Atuma attacks and uh, 
you know, Sue displays that, like, her powers are better than ever. Like, she's... Everybody got stronger and better at what they do with the ensuing decades. You know, like, mm. the thing is stronger. Oh, it's he like looks, practice. It's, duh. Yeah, basically. You know, like, John is better at controlling the plasma fields that generate his flames. Like, he can flame in space now. Mm. Uh, you know, the thing looks exactly the same. Can he and just acts wear that exactly the thing? Same. He, yeah, but that would only create an environment around his space. Like, that would only be flame within the environment. Right, he can shoot fireballs at Yes, he can, but look at how much more powerful he is now that he can do this. Uh, and, and Sue and her, you know, invisibility powers are also infinitely stronger. Um, By which you mean her force field powers, right? Because you're either invisible or you're not. You that's can't true, be like yeah, yeah. More so I'm more invisible, yeah. <laughs> she's, uh, she's so invisible that people forget she even exists. Well, I think that... <laughs> That's true. She all got to remind Reed about his wife. So, uh, but, you know, but her invisibility powers, it's not like she can be invisible and also make force fields. The force fields render her invisible. Okay. Wait, what? I think that's how it works. I don't that think it's like... Yeah, she doesn't think, have like two different powers. It's no, just it's two just that manifestations one, of the same power. Exactly. Okay. The same way that like we create... You know, she's not really invisible. She really creates like mirrored structures. I or see. Whatever. But then there would be reflections. I disagree. Okay. Right. Well, well, maybe way. she warps light around her yeah. force field. I think that's exactly how it works. But again, it's a comic book. She displays her power and then uses the ensuing like, battle to evade Namor and leave. <laughs> but not before, you know, like showing how powerful she is by creating like a kind of environment around themselves. Like she's like, look at what I can do. And she like makes a little room for themselves. Mm. Under the water. And then we're just like flops to the ground. <laughs> oh God! He's a god! Oh god bring he back. around! He's got legs and stuff. Yeah. But uh, she gives him a kiss on the cheek and then like floods the chamber and leaves. And he's like, oh. She says, thanks for being a good friend. She totally he's like, friend Aww. zones name. He's like, oh no! But in addition to the anarchists who are trying to like disrupt the utopia across the solar system, uh, we also have another uh, ever-growing population of idiots, I'm sorry, people, who reject the Methuselah protocols. Oh. Because it's not human. It's unnatural. Yeah. yeah. And Doctor Strange leads that religious group. Oh. Interesting. So, uh, and and also coincidentally adds mysticism and you know, this kind of school of thought to the concept. It's not just so, like, like, I'm not gonna live forever because it's unnatural. It's also like, yeah, there's also an element of mysticism and belief and faith involved in the process. Mm -hmm. And Strange is more than happy to oblige. And so seeing Strange and how old he is, you're like, oh, okay, so that's how much time has passed. Right. And maybe Strange is using his sorcery to keep his Not body alive. As old as he should Yeah, be. he's like, no, 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 I'm using natural magic to keep my body from turning to dust. Or it's just only been like 30, 40 years. Yeah. Yeah, because how old was he? He was in his 30s. He's he probably looks in his like 30s. he's probably... So he's probably like 100. Okay. Maybe 90. All right. Yeah. So. Okay. It's but, magic versus science. Well, you'd think that, but in fact, there is no battle. We're not building to a great. Mm. Um, We're just representing conflict that between there are differences Greek. of opinion. Exactly. Uh, we also meet uh, Strange's daughter, Clea, and so that's how we assume, like, okay, so Clea, his daughter, named after his wife, who's not here and is never referenced. But uh, she is probably like 25. Yeah. So yeah, that's probably how much time has passed. Okay. Uh, but, or at the very least, he had her maybe later in life. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, she's 25, but she still has the gray in her hair. That's true. But the, now we find out that it's actually genetic and has nothing to do with age. <laughs> so when we meet the anarchists, uh, they're represented by a bunch of classic Avengers villains who are just messing with the quarantine machines. So the Avengers go and engage them, and it's like the Enchantress and the Mad Thinker and stuff like that. Actually, it's the Wizard, I'm sorry. Uh, the Mad mm. Thinker shows up later. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they fight them, and uh, after they do battle them, uh, the villains turn to goop and disappear. And they're like, what the hell? Mm. Also, S.H.I.E.L.D. has now become an arc. They call it the S.H.I.E.L.D. arc. It's like a big, cool spaceship. Instead of a helicarrier, now it's like a big, cool spaceship. That's it. Okay. Big difference. Yeah, but it's an arc that would, you know, for travel through the stars. I assume it would. Yeah, and maybe it's like, it, we're ready. Once that quarantine thing goes down. <laughs> yeah. And it's full of people. Uh, but but yeah. only two of each side. <laughs> Naturally. 
but yeah, so that's that's what's going on. And so there's a mystery afoot. And so the Avengers go back to Earth, where they bump into more heroes, including uh, their super scientists like T'Challa and Hank Pym and Peter Parker. So there are still super Bruce villains. Banner. Well, no, yeah, we goop. thought there were, but then it turns out that they're actually just goop. And it's not that like they died. It's that Some, something something else is something afoot. else afoot, and they're approximating their greatest nemeses. Oh. But yes, there are supervillains. So we meet the eggheads who are like helping to run things on Earth. And we can see Earth is also a utopia. Things are, do, things are going well. And hey, Peter, yay. That's Peter Parker? That's Peter Parker. Oh, uh, okay. You can tell because he's doing the web thing. Right. Now we meet I Peter Parker. Like I don't They always put, give him a beard. I guess to show he's, he's, he's old. I don't like it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't see why. What are you saying? I don't know, he looks like a different character. Well, yeah, he does. That's why it's like. He looks like he's supposed to be like a. Like a wizard or something. I know. Uh, well, the outfit doesn't help. No, I guess but, that's more uh, it. Well, it's very Errol Flynnish. Yeah, yeah. It's true. We, so we meet the Bug Squad, which is just like Spider Boy, Wasp, and Beetle Boy. It's just Hank, Janet, and Peter's children. Mm -hmm. And they are just dressed like their superhero counterparts. And they're just little kids. And they are like, we have heard stories about how you guys were superheroes and we wish that we could fight crime like you used to. Wait a minute. <laughs> I have a weird question. Okay. okay. How do you have kids, but no one dies? Like, what's the cutoff age? Do you have to start taking the drug at a certain point? I would assume, like, yeah. Could I potentially stay 10 years old yeah, I guess indefinitely? You could. I, I assume, I mean, look, look. They don't, they don't get into it. I mean, like, sure, if you're 10, you want to be 10 forever, but like. Yeah, or it's just like, it doesn't, prevent aging uh, uh, until you get to 30. Right, and until you hit like the peak until of your physical. Until then it has no impact. Yeah. It's designed to keep you at an age once you get there, not prevent you from getting I, uh, I assume they don't get into it. So mm -hmm. what if someone was like, all right, I've been 30 for 500 years. But now I want to be 50. I, no, now <laughs> I want to be like 12. You can't, <laughs> I you can't go, go back. back. You can't go back. You can never go back. Yeah, you can't go back. You but can I can arrest go your development. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I can go forwards like 10 years and yeah. stop. Yeah if, you yeah, if you stop taking the drug, sure. Or whatever. Yeah, take the, stop taking the drug for 10 years, age 10 years. And, and then, then take it again. Take it again, then be that age. Yeah. But, it, you know. But just know, you'll never be able to <laughs> go back. You'll never be able to go back. So if it's worse, that's on you. Yeah, that's your choice. You made that choice. Which I think is fair. Yeah. I wouldn't. <laughs> so what if someone like was like 16, they're like, look, I'm starting to get like, IBS or something. Uh huh. I don't want to continue that. The if rest I get any life. older, I'm going to we fixed it. it. <laughs> We've cured yeah, we cured that separately. Yeah, off that's that's not related. We got that taken care. of. You know what would be it, hilarious? Yeah. If instead of working that way, where you just start aging again if you stop taking the drug, you just instantly age to yeah, where you're supposed oh! to. Be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't, oh, don't take. Don't stop. <laughs> oh my God. Here's the thing. You can't stop taking the drug. You can reduce your dose. Yeah. But it has to be so minimal. Right. You got to Reed Richards has to. Himself, like hand a, dosage. He has to administer the special <laughs> uh, micro dosage. Yeah. So kids is very strange, like that, because like, oh, I just had a child. Yes. That child is twelve. Mm -hmm. I'm three hundred. Yes. Yeah. But I look thirty. Yeah. And, yeah. and as far as my body's concerned, I am thirty. And I'm gonna keep having kids, so I'm gonna have like a thousand children. Uh, maybe. If I want to. Well, if my wife or wives or whatever are, are willing, <laughs> we don't get into it. All right. Never addressed. Good. <laughs> yes, that's probably the better. Listen, better and maybe now. this is why we don't do that. You know, like why we why we keep the Marvel Universe in the time we're yeah, in. Yeah, the way it is with realistic levels of technology yeah, and please. science. Please. Because yeah. it, it answers these, it, it raises these questions. And we're not ready to address questions for problems that we actually have. <laughs> <laughs> so the yeah. uh, you know so they're working on it, but they're like, oh, we heard so they, oh, there was this signal that sent these goop monsters from Pluto, and we th were trying to figure out where it's coming from, and we knew the anarchists are involved. What's going on? Who cares? But that's what they're mm -hmm. doing. So the heroes are still heroing, right? right. And Johnny's one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, also, there's this funny like Whoa, weird who John. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's also this other like weird subplot which again we don't get into, mm. but like I think Vision is really resentful of Iron Man because well, like he's a robot because Iron Man's also a robot but also <laughs> he has very cavalier about his body like when he dies which he does like on the first mission like he just explodes and like don't worry his consciousness is probably already in a new drone and Vision's like yeah but I'm me and if I break I'm dead like how come you don't do a thing for me it's like because you're not a person 
Like, they don't get into it, but there's just this weird undercurrent of, like, resentment between Vision and Iron Man. And when Iron Man... you understand, you were never human to begin with. Yeah, we can't help you. You don't have a soul. Exactly. And Stark did. And it went to heaven or whatever. <laughs> but his brain is still working around here. They don't get into that either. But, uh, but maybe, maybe Vision's he's like still too a second class is. I mean, sure. Yeah, probably. I don't know. It's weird. It, they don't get into it. But or, like, or maybe Vision like thinks it's perverse. I think it it's is. Like, I, think Vir- I don't like, want to be able to do that. That's. I think Vision's like, no, no, no. You're humans. And I'm a robot. But when humans become robots, that's where I draw the line. <laughs> what about Cyborg? No, because okay. you're basically wearing robot face. You're pret- <laughs> oh, I'm a robot. No, no but not. I am a robot, though. <laughs> but so am I. I always was a robot, though. <laughs> That's different. You just became a robot. You, 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 you defied the natural order of your species. Well, the natural the order thing. of our species is we don't talk yeah, but, to robots. So. Well, not only that, but also you, uh, you we, we to, threw that out the window the day we built you, dipshit. Yeah, exactly. You got to live forever. Yeah, that was my thing. Right, exactly. Yeah, my thing was I live forever because I'm an f- artificial person. Now you get to live forever because you take a pill or something. But now you're also living forever because- You can't because also be a robot You can also be time. a robot. It's like, oh, well, if the pill wears off, I'll get to be a robot too. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Iron Man thinks that the bug squad is hilarious. And he's also talking to people on Earth. And this is how he like travels, by the way. He's on Earth, he's like, oh, well, I gotta go with the Avengers over in like space. So then his consciousness just goes from that drone to the other drone, just <laughs> Actually, it doesn't. It, no, it goes. It just goes. It goes into sentry mode. And just walks into a closet. <laughs> <laughs> so he arrives. Like, he's like, Iron, ha. Man, Iron Man. God damn it. That's right. <laughs> so the Avengers like bring Iron Man's like body with them in the quint. Like there's a Iron Man they bring with them if Tony Stark like wants to Decides go to Earth. He wants to in case be he wants to them. join the team. And so he <laughs> pops back into himself and goes, ha ha ha. Like he's still completing his thought from down on Earth to here. And Vision's like, I think it's weird that, like, I think you may need another diagnostic. And Iron Man's like, what? Because, like, you think I didn't figure out the math? Like, you think that I'm just, like, I'm broken or something? Like, it's weird and I don't like it. And, it, <laughs> and, and, and Davis brought it up. So I'm addressing it. But also, we'll never get answers because there's no sequel to this. Because it's the end. That's amazing. And I'm like, what the hell? And these aren't even Fantastic Four characters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I extra don't care. No, it's it, really well, weird. I, I guess Alan Davis could, if he wanted to, go back and do Avengers The End, because they also never did an Avengers The End. They did The Last Avengers Story, but that sucked. And we also covered it. But Alan Davis could do Avengers The End as a sequel to this the way he did Another Nail. Right. But anyway... The Avengers go and do their thing. <laughs> and uh, we see that like John Storm is like really capable. Like all of his years in the Fantastic Four and the decades since, he has gotten really good at his job and he's really good at superheroing and he's like, good at strategizing. Like he's not a kid anymore. He learned a lot from the Fantastic Four. He and learned, applies. he grew up. Yeah, and he grew up. So now he's like a I mean, leader. mentally. Yes, yeah, no, exactly. Everyone stayed <laughs> where they were, which is great. And also I wonder, cause like Steve Rogers is there and he's hanging out with them too. And I'm like, but are you taking it? Or is that the super soldier serum? Anyway, hmm. we also established that the high evolutionary is also like, I guess because humanity evolved to this point, the high evolutionary just stopped being such a dick about it. So now he's working with them and he's helping them out. Oh. That's it. And he's got these slime monsters and stuff. Yeah. Wait, goop monsters? Yeah, but they're different and they're not his. Don't worry, he's not like a turncoat or anything. Hmm. It's just, hey, here's this. Maybe he's a red herring or something. I don't know. Yeah. It's weird, but he's there. It's, it's just like, I mean, logically, the them. high evolutionary would be, you know, a nicer guy now that we've uh, evolved. evolved. Yeah, that was like, his whole thing. You did it. Maybe, maybe high evolutionary shared some of his technology with Reed. That's how he got them a Methuselah thing in the first place. Oh, maybe. All I know is he's here and he's not a problem anymore. Right. But also he still chooses to dress like that. Oh, I really don't like bizarre earthworm h- hanging out behind him. I know, I'm sorry. I know, it's gross. Yeah, he's got a name too. That's Ascari's. And he's got a, a custom uh, speech bubble that's all like gnarled. Well, that's how you know that he sounds gross and weird. Yeah. <laughs> so the Avengers spring into action because there's good, there's another one of the quarantine towers being attacked, this time by Ultrons. There's a ton of Ultrons. Oh. And they're like, holy crap, Ultron. We're effed. Like, this is a big problem. Ultron's a serious villain. Plus, I also thought we killed Ultron. Like, I thought we deactivated the last Ultron like decades ago. Right. 
Uh, so that's what you always say. You always thought you deactivated the last Ultron. I know, but uh, anyway, they're group just two. like there's always more Tony Starks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they're group two. Nope, it was just faking Ultron. So that's that. Um, mm. Seems like a serious problem. I know. So uh, the Parliament for Galactic Unity, which is to say the Galactic Council of Aliens who hate humans, are uh, <laughs> convening and they're talking about the human problem. What you solved it. Oh, yeah. oh, but now we're trying to break out of the barrier. Well, something's happening with the barriers. Right. And basically what they decree is as long as the barrier stays up and humanity honors the treaty... There won't be a problem. There won't be a problem. <laughs> so you guys just stay in your own solar system and uh, everything will be good. Uh, uh, feels like if I don't stay in my solar system, there's going to be a problem. It, well, I didn't say it seems gonna be a like you're creating a fake war. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like some of you really want a war. I didn't say there's going to be a problem. I just said everything will be fine. If you stay inside. Yeah, I said there wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> I don't know why you're talking about there being a problem. I said there wouldn't be one. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yes, uh, the the Shi'ar and the Kree are kind of like, I don't, I really, I really have a problem with these people. Like, I think we should right. probably do something about it. And they're like, no, we, we, we drew up our, like, look, if we start breaking treaties and blowing right. up shield generators, then, you know, we're no better than they are. Right. Well, that's why right. we're not. They're being attacked by their own creations. Yeah, like it's so weird. Yeah, they're a problem over there. Uh, but yeah, also the Shi'ar are also like demonstrably X-Men characters. And so it's kind of like you'd think that they might have a problem because of the mutant war or something. But no, it's just, all right, why not use these Shi'ar? And I'm like, thank you. The Shi'ar were just like, yeah, look, we're sad the mutants are dead, but we're not mutants. Exactly. It wasn't our war. Right? So while the Avengers fight the Ultron goop monsters, the uh, generator for one of the quarantine zones explodes, and they're like, damn it, that was like a, that was a clear and obvious distraction to keep us from protecting the tower. Hmm. You yeah, know, they generate the, like, artificial barrier of the neutral zone that is the solar system. Got it. It's like the little traffic lights in Fifth Element. They're like... <laughs> Everyone has to wait at that border yeah. until you're cleared. Yeah, yeah, it's just that we'll be waiting forever, for, <laughs> at least as, as, if the Galactic Council gets what they want. So now that it, that's destroyed, does that mean there's like a gap that people can go through? There is a gap, and okay. also if the Galactic Council gets word of it, it's like, what do you, what do you, what do you do? You take, Why'd you blow up one of the towers? Are you taking down the quarantine? No, 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 no. Because I see that the part that's no, supposed no, to have no, a thing. No, 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 it was terrorists. It was terrorists. It was, oh. It's unintentional. What? We're, we're, oh, we're, well, we're handling it. You must have arrested them. Where are they? They, they evaporated in a goop and disappeared? Uh-huh. Yeah, see, see, you see what's going on. Yes. Also, uh, how would this work? There would have to be a sphere. Yeah, they, yeah they, around the things. entire solar system. We don't see system. it. We don't see it. No, it's, 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 it can't be a ring. That doesn't work. No. Nope, yeah, they just go above it. I know, yeah. There have to be a, we, a whole bubble they, around... We don't see it. It's just, there's towers and stuff. Yeah. On different parts of the solar system. Yeah. So uh, Fury finds out that the signal that uh, sent these goops in the first place is originating from Earth, and so we're, mm. it's is it's seemingly sabotage. Like right. we are doing it ourselves. The Avengers got a ping that something is going on on Mars. Like they saw a signal from Mars. Mm. So it was like, oh. Get your ass to Mars. They gotta get their asses to Mars. <laughs> so uh, John goes with the Silver Surfer because they're both Fantastic Four characters. But I mean, because Silver Surfer's board can go faster than the ship. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> so they go, and they're going to Mars. And it's the first time that Johnny's seen Ben in years, mm -hmm. and so he, that's gonna be exciting. But also, there's like this kind of suspicion because you know, like we know that there are people who there, we know there's aliens and civilizations in the Galactic Council that hate humanity. One of them is the Kree. The Kree created the Inhumans. So maybe the Inhumans are working as double agents for them to take down our, our, our quarantines. So mm. we okay. know that Ben Not works with the Inhumans, so we'll, we'll use our relation with Ben to talk to the Inhumans and see what's going on. Plus Johnny used and to fuck on one of them. them. And well, that. that's true. <laughs> so he can, he's gonna go talk to Crystal maybe and uh, pump information out of her. And so <laughs> uh, we see that uh, Reed is just working feverishly to get his technology working. Yep. And uh, then we see that She-Hulk's there and uh, she's looking menacingly at him, and then Uatu shows up, and the Watcher is <laughs> about to intervene when another Watcher shows up, and he goes, hey, you're not about to uh, break your solemn oath again, are you? And he's like, what? <laughs> so you got three panels of people watching. <laughs> yeah. Like, she's watching. Well, Reed's watching Reed. the readings. Yeah. She-Hulk's watching Reed. Uatu's watching She-Hulk and the whole proceedings, <laughs> and another Watcher's watching the Watcher. So that answers the question of who watches the Watcher. Other Watchers. Other Watchers. 
So he's like, but hey, don't worry, there's another watcher watching that watcher. Watch the watcher. That's right. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> so it looks like, like you were wavering your mission to stop the watcher from intervening. Well, he's like, well, what if like they destroy? What if, what if what happens that I'm watching and what I see is happening causes their destruction? He's like, well, then you'll have to watch it. And we're gonna watch you and make sure that you keep watching. He's like, okay. I won't do anything. <laughs> is that to tell us that like something pretty big's about? Oh happen. yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Well, also to go. Wait, I thought she all left. Like, right. Yeah, she did. Oh. Who's this? Oh. <gasps> and also, we know the scrolls are involved. So you know, whatever. Uh, meanwhile, Strange and Clea, his daughter, not his wife, gross, are talking <laughs> about the about love and individuality and giving up one's like attachments. And how, you know, Strange is like, you have to, you eventually, in order to become Sorcerer Supreme, you have to give up your worldly attachments. She said, but I love you, and I derive strength from my love for you, and so I'll never relinquish my love for you, so I can never actually do it. And Strange is like, so you can never imagine a scenario where you could detach yourself from your love for me. And he, she's like, no. And he's like, well, what about your, what if, what if you have children? And she's like, well, then I will love them above all others. And she's, and, and he's like, right, like above me. So you will essentially detach yourself right. from your worldly possession of your so love I for me. So I know you can do it. Yeah, and she's You're like. You're choosing not to. Right, she's like, oh shit, like you just taught me a valuable lesson. And I'm like, mm. okay. Yeah, uh, other than the fact that you can love multiple things. Right, and it's, yeah, but like, you know. But the, something the, can like interfere or, or supersede. Supplant, see, yeah. Yeah, and like cause you to choose that over. Another. The thing you thought was like, the most important, the most important and irreplaceable. Yes, yeah. uh, but also it's a lesson Strange is teaching to Clea because they're involved in a story that's going to be happening later about the loss of children. So you know, you see what's going on here. <laughs> uh, so you know, Johnny bumps into Ben. They go to the uh, a secret place where Ben's like, "All right, so what's what's the big Avengers problem that you want me to spy on the Inhumans for?" And he's like, "Oh <laughs> man, you know everything. That's amazing." <laughs> uh, meanwhile. St uh, Reed sends a Herbie robot through his interdimensional uh, teleporter. He's like, "It's gonna here we, here we go. I did all the calculations, Wyatt. You check it out. S let me know if the Herbie is destroyed or not. And it arrives, and it's melted. I mean, you're getting there. Right. It got through. Right, but he's That's like, impressive. But nothing about my calculation says it should be destroyed. It should work. And he's like freaking out and punching things when She-Hulk shows up. Sounds like a Doom problem. I, it, it's not. It's not a Doom problem. Really? Like he's not. sending oh, things be perfect, though. through an alternate dimension that has stuff in it already. He is. Hey, man, there's like people there and stuff. You can't just pass through their dimension on the way oh. to like where you're trying to get what to. What if it was the negative zone? Where there's mostly nothing. Right. So well, what if there was a villain nothing. who's hanging out there who you're about to like let out or whatever? Oh, you mean like an Ilus? <laughs> so, but it's, but when, that, when that is revealed, it's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, but in the meantime, you know, Reed can't fathom it. He's just like, I send the, I send the robot through there, uh, something happens in the negative zone, and then it arrives over there, but it's all fucked up. And yeah. he's, but as far as Reed's concerned, he's like, am I losing it? Reed, the right. negative zone is never a good idea. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Ever. Yeah, he, he learns that lesson eventually. But it's just it's just sitting there. Yeah. Just, just waiting it's, it's, to be used. There's nothing there except for one <laughs> asshole. I mean, come on. And some bugs. Sentient bugs. There's a right? lot of bugs, Reed. It's a lot, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Johnny bumps into Crystal. Uh, she's wearing her mask, you know, to make sure that everybody knows that she's not a human being. <laughs> and he's like, hey, that is some hot mask action. <laughs> And she's like, uh, I guess for whatever reason that turns me on. And so, uh, you know, <laughs> even though you're a gross human, well, I don't think that. I used to bang them. Right. But I'm just forced to wear this by by. No, my but society is society, society has made me have to force to think that. I have to say that out loud. Yeah, I have to say it out loud. Gross. Yeah, you know, gross. But also, so the humans like they they bump into Johnny and they're just like, so what are you doing? Spy on us? Look, we're not. We don't work for the Kree. Let's work together. There's actually a signal over there in like the wastelands where they haven't terraformed yet. Let's go check it out and uh, see what signal is coming up on our screen. So let's go check that out. So they go. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I mean, there should be signals everywhere. This well, is a special it's, signal they're looking for. A signal that matches the one that you think is relevant to the problem. Precisely. Yeah. So the Watcher goes to visit Galactus and he's like, hey, can I come in? And Galactus is like, you're already here. <laughs> I mean, you're already broke in. You might as well step forth and <laughs> tell me what you want. I might as well drink, drink my beer. <laughs> <laughs> While you're in there, could you get me one? <laughs> no, I don't mean that. Put that back. Anyway, he's like, what do you want, Uatu? 
And he's like, hey, yeah, I was just here to remind you that uh, Earth is pretty cool. It's a cool place. And uh, you remember that time you almost died or was on trial by the Galactic Council and both times Earth saved your ass? Just saying. It's pretty cool of them. I keep that in mind. Anyway, bye. Mm, interesting. <laughs> That's it. Oh, oh, I can't interfere, but I can't talk to Galactus for a few seconds about something. I just want to hang out with my old pal. I'm just talking to Bloody. I'm just trying to have a conversation. I'm just going to talk to him. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, you're just going to talk to him. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, T'Challa's throwing a big party, and we establish that She-Hulk's at the party. And, uh, yeah. She-Hulk mm. can't be at the party. What? She's, the She's talking to Reed. And also, the communications between uh, T'Challa and, in fact, Earth and Reed's satellite are down. And uh, so then She-Hulk uh, saunters up to Reed, and she's like, hey, listen, you look tired. Let me give you a massage, you know? Mm. Meanwhile, his wife is digging through the, like, core of the Earth, uh, you know, through the So meanwhile, his wife is uh, under the depths of the ocean looking for ancient markings, and she finds this, like, crazy moon language, and is like, oh, that's what I'm looking for! And then so she eventually uh, goes into a deep pocket of like volcanic activity liquid hot magma yep and uh, goes through there and ends up in a crazy like you know beneath the earth like, you know <laughs> what, what's uh, like hollow earth type area oh you know boy I mean? yeah, yeah we're getting hollow earth in here okay yeah, well, it's it, it's not quite hollow earth it's more like there's a pocket that's subterranean and there's gonna be people in there right I mean, people is such I mean, a broad it's word. It's not going to be nothing. It, it's not nothing. Is it going to be mutants? <laughs> it's going to be monsters. No, it's not like the X-Men are down there. That would have been kind of awesome. <laughs> but I think Alan Davis is like, I'm done drawing these effing X-Men. That's... I want to draw the rest of them. Because the thing is, if if the X-Men show up, they're going to make it all about them. <laughs> they okay? can't help it. Well, even to be I, fair, we did all die. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if you didn't, it would be all about you, okay? <laughs> even though you're dead, it's all about you because all anybody can ask about is where's the X-Men? <laughs> what happened to the mutants? What is the mutant war? Mutant war, that's it, okay? <laughs> you want to see mutant war? Maybe one day, 20 years later, I'll draw it, all right? Are we not going to talk about the Cthulhu monster that we saw on the rock? That could be a harbinger of things to come. <laughs> she finds the monsters from Monster Island. They live down there now. Oh, okay. That's it. That's fun. And they're, and they're fun. I love seeing them. But uh, so the Fantastic Four, or rather the Fantastic Two, <laughs> uh, Johnny, Ben, and the Inhumans go to the like mysterious signal. signal spot, and they find a Cree Sentry. Not capital S, the Sentry. Rather, a Cree Sentry. We've dealt with them actually in previous episodes, but they're just robots that are sent to different planets, mostly Earth, uh, that do stuff the Cree want. This, and also, because kind of like, you know, the celestial seeded life everywhere, but the Cree also mucked around with sentient life. Mm -hmm. So presumably the Cree put sentries on places they've screwed with and put and laid them dormant until they were needed. Mm -hmm. And so this, this sentry is active. There was always life on Mars. That's true, yeah, no, it's true. Uh, and so they fight the sentry, they beat the sentry. Uh, okay. Meanwhile, uh, She-Hulk is flirting with Reed until eventually she tries to like hook up with it. She's like, we could just we could just do it and then it'll <laughs> chill you out, maybe like clear your brain. And he's like, get away from me. What are you doing? I'm married. Yeah, and then she eventually just punches him in the face with a big extendo fist and reveals that she's the super scroll. And she's like, nah, gotcha. I was about to make out with Clert. <laughs> and he's like, I wasn't even close to making out with you, you big jerk. You no, talking? you were totally into it. You were totally into it. You were like slobbering all over me. <laughs> You couldn't, you couldn't wait. You couldn't wait, and I had to stop you. That's why I punched you. Okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, had to uh, keep you off of me. Oh. <laughs> so Sue crashes when she passes. She didn't see the Cthulhu thing, but she crashes into this area, and, she, and her windscreen's gone. She's like, "What the crap? I should be dead, but I'm not." And oh, it's like my force field abilities kicked in on their own. Right? No, no, oh, no. I'm so strong. No, this is just she's in a place with like cliffs and atmosphere, right. and uh, and she remembers that the the moon language she saw, she saw while she was investigating this area matches a energy signal that Valeria cast right before she died. Hmm. Which triggers Sue to know that this is where she's supposed to be, which has been guiding her the entire time. Why is Sue undressing? Oh. It's hot. Yeah. Well, she's, you know, near liquid hot magma. <laughs> so Black Bolt takes down the sentry, but the damage has been done and a ship has slipped through the quarantine zone from outside, oh. undetected. And uh, well, well, slipped in. Well, slipped, yeah, slipped in to Earth, yeah. This is okay. Some, this, is, this is a problem from without. 
Uh, but w there's another ship that is around the rings of Neptune, and it is captained by classic old Marvel villains, the Mad Thinker and Diablo. What? I've That's, never heard of them. Yeah, we don't really talk about them because they don't do much. <laughs> they don't come up much because no one uses them. Diablo, ironically, is also, like, he's a human being, but he also has figured out, like, through alchemy, how to not die. He's, like, over 100 years old. So, like, he also is, like, oh. Methuselah. Uh, but Which one is he? He's the one yeah, okay. in the costume. Okay. <laughs> Whereas the Mad Thinker is just in sweats. <laughs> and uh, he's doing the thinker pose. He's doing the thing where he thinks. And the Mad Thinker's just smart. Yes. Or, yeah, yeah okay. he's, he's smart and he can make stuff. Like, not with his mind or anything. Well, with his mind and tools. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so Diablo and Mad Thinker are employed by nefarious forces to do stuff like make goop monsters. Okay. And it's through Diablo's alchemy and Mad Thinker's genius that they can do this. Make the goop monsters and yes. remotely pilot them or whatever. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and send them places. That's right. Uh, so anyway, they're going to blow up the shield arc, or at least that's their plan now. Uh, and oh no. Why? They already got in. Yeah, no, they they were already in. That was oh. a ship that was coming in. They were on a different ship by Neptune. Oh. They were already here, right, because they were from here. Yeah, exactly. But they're going to blow up more of the shield, so I guess well, more no, no, ships no. can I come in. I mean capital S oh. S H I E L D. Oh, okay. Shield. Right. Okay. Arc. The Arc Shield. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sue arrives at uh, the new location of the Moloids and the uh, monsters from Monster Island. She's like, what the hell? What are all these Moloids? What's going on? And the Mole Man's like, oh, you found me. How could you be here right when I was about to go over the surface world? You bitch. And uh. you're like, what? <laughs> Do you wait, know how wait, far away going? you are from the surface world? You right. ain't taking over shit. No, no, no. I got a whole big plan, and it was literally happening right now. How could you be that that kid? And it's like that he has no plan that is connected to anything else that's going on. He coincidentally is about to take over the surface world. Yeah. Once he I gets, I just say that every day, man. Oh, he, he's, <laughs> I I assumed he was just in his sweats at home and. A superhero. I mean, oh no! Uh, I was about to take over the service world too. You fool! Oh, but you've stopped me. Uh, I guess I'll just go back to watching MacGyver. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Moloids like, sir. You know, I've been talking to the other Moloids, and I feel like you're kind of losing sight of the mission. I feel like we're never gonna attack the surface what? world. What? Uh, no, just no. We're totally gonna attack the surface world. I just have, you know, some ideas that I have to run through. Well, the last time that we invaded the surface world was when you lost cable reception <laughs> and you needed a hard wire, and all we did was just we needed three guys and we just ran a line, you know, the pirate cable. Yeah, and that's a very important line. It's a very good thing that you guys did. Yeah, I feel like it's just very good for you to watch TV. <laughs> uh, all I'm saying is I'm running low on coke. <laughs> Because I'm a mole lawyer, I don't know what else to do. Dude, just, get, just get him the coke. If he actually wants to invade the service world, we are going to be decimated by superheroes. <laughs> yeah. They don't even regard us. They don't know we have sentience. Like, they think we're like... I, I swear to God, I think Daredevil thinks we're robots. <laughs> Oh, what are these moloids, huh? Well, they don't have souls. Kill, <laughs> These kill, Billy Clubs make quick work of these. <laughs> uh, so... So the Inhumans and uh, Ben and John go into a ship that they have that's, you know, Inhuman-based, and they ride the wake that is run by the Silver Surfer so it can go faster to get to Reed's ship because oh, they- Oh, they're drafting. Yeah, they're drafting. Oh. They're literally drafting. Uh, but they, because they tried to call Reed and the communication was down, and then they found, and I don't know, because they were like, oh, the scrolls are involved. And I'm like, can you see what's happening right now with Reed? Because it doesn't, because <laughs> like, if the do communications you know? are down, then how do you know that Reed's dealing with scrolls? Because the only time we knew scrolls were involved was when the scrolls like, pitched a fit at the galactic meeting, like three right, which issues they ago. Which they weren't at. Which they weren't at and had no access to. What do you, so I, I, I guess they saw it. Somehow, maybe they like piggyback the signal through Reed. Well, matter. you know, Re Reed's signal wasn't getting through, and uh, that—that's a good sign that the that scrolls the are scrolls involved. are involved. I mean, like, look, <laughs> that's a total so, scroll move. Four out of ten times, you're gonna be right about that. <laughs> Second weird question. Mm -hmm. uh, so, when the barrier went up for our solar system, it's the quarantine. The quarantine. Because I don't know. Because yeah, it's not a physical barrier. Well, I, I guess it's it is because, you bump like, into, because but... a ship went through, and they were like, right. it was able to. So maybe it is, but maybe it's also like it's undetected if it goes through. So it could be a barrier, or it could be a metaphorical like, like a warning like, system. Like a, like a warning system, yeah. Like or maybe just, maybe it takes over the computers of any ship that tries to get across, and, and it just, just sends it right around. back. I'm sure. So 
Johnny John <laughs> is in John. our solar system. Yeah, yeah. So is the Silver Surfer, but the Silver Surfer's not human. No. And he's an, a galactic character. Yeah. He is he not allowed to cross over? It doesn't come up. He's an Avenger. I assume he doesn't. But also, like, it's like you picked why? your you picked your side. You've right. got to stay inside. I, I think that's what it is. It's like picked his side, or like uh, the barrier goes up, and he's like, "Whoa, I'm still in here. Yeah. Whoa, 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 what the whoa, hell? I don't know. Uh, they, I don't they, know. You... they don't address his okay. like his dual citizenship. <laughs> like he could be a great interstellar mule, though. You know, you can oh. get inter interstellar contraband up his butt and just. Fly over the border if he has free trade, which I don't know if he does. Yeah. I mean, if Galactus showed up, he supersedes whatever treaties they have. And mm -hmm. he's like, I need my Herald. Right. <laughs> Whoa, Galactus, what do you think's going on? He's stuck in there. I don't care. I don't know what that is, and I don't care. <laughs> I will eat you all. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, the Super Scroll puts Reed into a box. Uh, oh, and Reed reveals to the Super Scroll when he was a hot She Hulk that uh, he's using the negative zone. Mm. Okay. And he reveals he's got like a negative zone portal that he's using. Mm -hmm. I mean, he never goes near it or opens it. But so. don't worry, nothing can come out of it. Yeah. yeah. The Super Scroll is like, what? It sounds like you're playing with fire. What are you doing? No, the Super Scroll is like, sweet. Now I've got it. All right. Because like, you're like, okay, what what is happening right now? Right. Like, what is what, the how plot is this all going to be pulled together? Story? Yeah. Yes. Like, what? Wh where is the Mole Man feature? And it's like the Mole Man <laughs> is the first time that it's just he's a wild card. Yeah. Where you're like, like, I don't think this is going. Anyway. It's, but it is. <laughs> they just it, introduced the friggin' it Mole Man. It ends up being connected, but the Mole Man is not a willing participant. Okay. Interesting. Is the negative zone the key? Do no. you travel through the negative zone to get outside the barrier? No. He wants to be able to use the negative zone to, be, to travel anywhere, which would also include the barrier if he was to break the treaty or draw up a new one. But no, it's <laughs> uh, not. I'd restrict it in software so that you can't teleport outside. The I mean, like he doesn't care. But also, like there's there's no profit in going to the other side of the galaxy. I don't need anything over there. My children are dead, and my family doesn't want to talk to me. I, I don't do anything. No, the super scroll. Oh, the Super Scroll. No, the Super Scroll's plan is because he showed up here, went into like hibernation, and then eventually like woke up, infiltrated a robot, came onto Reed's shuttle, and then just became a hot lady that would inevitably trick Reed into revealing that he had some useful information that he could then steal and bring back to the to the Scroll Empire. He's so just he like, didn't know what he was gonna find. No, he was just <laughs> like, well, I know Reed's always working on something. <laughs> so maybe I'll just steal whatever he's working we'll just on. Just get Reed's latest, bestest idea. Yeah, and Reed is like, I'm using the negative and then zone. I'll, and then I'll rush it into production and beat him to the punch I, so that we make way more money than he would no, ever make. Not, like, what is the. No, it was, it was, the Super Scrolls plan is because Reed established I'm going to make it, basically teleportation possible using the negative zone. The, the Super Scrolls is like, sweet, the Scroll Empire could really use that. Hmm. So I'm going to steal your technology which is to say the, your ability to connect to the negative zone at all and bring it to the Skrull Empire and then the Skrull will be able to teleport anywhere in the world and of course because they can shapeshift, the, the They're implications even more dangerous. Are, yeah. uh, are disastrous. Uh, so that's that's Clert's plan, mm -hmm. which is unrelated to the signals and the goop monsters and the moloids. Right. Jesus. It's just, this is what this, this opportunistic douchebag is gonna happen no matter do. what. Yes. This is just a. This is just another Crime story. Just another Fantastic Four book happening in the middle of this Fantastic Four. I mean, it is the end after all. So <laughs> he, you understand? I've been waiting so long to do something. I just picked the first opportunity. I'm your villain, <laughs> and if you guys aren't a team, what do I even do? Yeah, and it was way easier to beat you because there's only a fourth of you. So he puts Reed into like a cube and then throws it into the negative zone. I had to put you oh. in a cube so it's not like a bubble, otherwise you'd probably like miss your wife or something. What? Oh, because it approximates her powers? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, Sue! And so he whips Reed into it, but Reed finds like a microscopic seam and then pours a little bit of himself out of it and then grabs Clert and pulls him into the negative zone with him. Oh, nice. If I'm going to hell, I'm <laughs> taking you with me. So oh, then awesome. they go into the negative zone and I guess Johnny and the thing see that happen or something? Because they're like, Reed isn't coming out of the asteroid. And Ben's like, and there's scrolls. And I'm like, oh, what? Oh, uh, we're skipping some stuff here. Yeah, so oh, then watch. they go to the asteroid. Meanwhile, while that's happening, the ship that got through the quarantine zone, yeah, that is full of troops and leaders of the Shi'ar and the Kree empires, which are joined forces to destroy humanity. Because they're like, humanity is a problem. We always want to kill them. The Galactic Empire is happy to like make treaties with them and stuff. But like, we know, we know what happens when like six of these guys show up. 
Right. You know we I mean? know better than the Galactic Council. Like, or... yeah. Oh, and Lalandra's there because she's like, these people killed Charles. <laughs> yeah, I don't I'm give gonna a shit. I'm going to annihilate. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I like, mean, oh, there's no reason for, left for me to Yeah, I got take no tether to humanity, so let's, yeah. let's screw him up. Yeah, whatever. Let's kill him. So, Ronan the Accuser. Let's kill him. Let's kill him. Let's kill him. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Gladiator and uh, Ronan the Accuser and everybody's working together and they just, they infiltrate Reed's base to destroy, you know, everything. Like, they're gonna... Mm. From, we're starting with, with Reed Richards. Well, we all hate him and also, like, he's they're got... They're going to the moon around Earth? Well, no, the asteroid. The asteroid. Yeah. yeah. So, uh... Well, he's their greatest foe. Yes. Maybe. Or could be. So, they crossed over and they just traveled all the way from the outside of our solar system just to get to that asteroid. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, that's their first stop. That was their first stop. Yeah. Uh, but also, they all blame Reed. Like, when they have a conversation about, like, how humanity is adva- advanced faster mm. than we're capable of, they're like, we all know why! <laughs> all right? It's one guy! And he's the reason why humanity is now, Catching like, up comparable to us. To us. Right. And that sucks! And I mean, he did put the Fantastic Four logo on all of the stuff he was doing. That's true, yeah. yeah. But he also, like, made humanity... Here's all your technology! Around. Fantastic Four TM. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's how I managed to keep capital going. Uh, so then, so that's what's happening, right? So, like, Reed is thrown into the Negazone, Reed grabs Clert, and then all of them are going into the Negazone. Johnny, the Inhumans, and Ben go to the asteroid. They can't talk to Reed. They assume Skrulls, so they're going to break in. The Shi'ar Empire and the Kree Empire have joined forces and sent a whole cadre of soldiers to infiltrate Reed's asteroid as well. So that's... that's What's happening on the asteroid? Wow, what right timing. Now. Meanwhile, Reed is freed from his cube by a monster, you know, like one of Annihilus's many different creatures from the negative zone. Mm-hmm. And because uh, it just attacks him, because they're just mindless monsters. Ah! Right. Like, I see a thing, I smash it. It's right. like getting a treat out of a, out of a cat toy. <laughs> exactly. So, so, so Reed is free. Annihilus shows up and he's like, oh, <laughs> Reed Richards, you son of a bitch. Let's do this. So you're like, yes, <laughs> what? Annihilus, sweet. I've been waiting. So while Annihilus is going to fight uh, Reed, there's a great moment where Annihilus is like, oh, I'm the, I'm the ruler of this place. I'm going to fuck you up. And Clark's like, ah, oh, great ruler of the negative zone. Perhaps you need a shape-shifting monster like myself and your employees. Like one day, maybe you piece of shit. Uh. Don't talk to me. The Mole Man reveals that b- deep beneath the magma, within the, you know, I mean, look, they didn't go to the core of the Earth, right? They're pretty deep. You know, they went to the deepest part of the ocean. Went yeah, under but it's the, a pocket. Yeah, but it's a pocket underneath uh-huh. th- the crust of the There's ocean. There's lava and stuff, but it's not like crushing them by the pressure. Yeah, of and we're not going to pretend like the core of the Earth is actually some mystical artifact that Doctor Strange can wield. Right. But within the magma is, it's the orb of Nomon. What? Is that a thing that's existed before? Nope, it's invented oh, okay. for this book. Oh. Uh, but within this, but we find the out ultimate that- ultimate archeological find. <laughs> okay. So we reveal that this whole place, cause like when Sue starts looking around, there's like architecture and stuff. And she knows mm. that Mole Man doesn't like dabble <laughs> in sculpture. Well, you, you don't have any sense of aesthetics. I mean, look that at you. Just, this is gorgeous. Yeah. And, and, and you're, you're hideous. Right, exactly. And it's like, no, because that's actually the Citadel. Ow. <laughs> really hurts. Yeah. Well, oh, come on. What do you want from me, Mole Man? You're a freaking Mole Man. Yeah. It's actually a guy. He just looks like a mole man. The moloids create weapons. Yeah, Clearly they are crafters. No, they steal weapons for you. But And they are weapons. Anyway, they're actually in the citadel of the Elder Gods. And deep within the magma, in the citadel itself, is the orb of Nomon. And these are all just gobbledygook moon language. Who cares? But uh, what matters is that this is like the cup of Christ that Sue has been seeking ever since she pretended to be interested in archaeology. <laughs> I see. She heard a rumor about something that could bring her kids back. <laughs> <laughs> and this is it. And yeah. when she saw the same, like, moon language that uh, Valeria cast, or that she remembers Valeria casting mm. right before she died, uh, she knows that this is exactly what she needs. And that... How, how did Valeria know about it? Uh, good question. That's one of her powers or something? Yeah. Uh, oh, so she can kind of look into the future a little bit. So uh, she's like, I want to go in there and a get it. A little bit? Because this is like decades and decades. Well, no, no, she no, only but, but saw like only one saw thing. She like a symbol. She didn't yeah. see the whole future. Yeah, she couldn't. Piece of she didn't like write a book and go like, this is what's going to happen in 100 <laughs> years. So, uh, you know, Mole Man is like, I know that the orb's in there and I want it and I'm going to use it to take over the surface world. And she's like, well, I'm going to jump into the magma and I'm going to take it and I'm going to leave. <laughs> and so that's her plan. And so, 
Uh, she jumps in and, you know, uses her power, and you're like, wow, look at how powerful no, she is. No, I've slowly been throwing the moloids into the lava. <laughs> like, absorb I know, the heat. I know eventually it'll create, like, a crude bridge across. <laughs> no, it's, it's oh in the lava. You have to go in the lava to get it. Oh, yeah. well, they're going to fill up the lava. Exactly, they'll the, absorb all the Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I'm talking like it's gonna take a long hundreds time, of thousands of Well, I've of already been working bodies. on it for a couple hundred years. Or, or, <laughs> yeah, I just, 60 I, they, years. They've been fucking for like eons now, <laughs> yeah. just creating more of them. I just keep pitching them in. Just, yeah, just pitch them right in. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Sue descends basically like literally into hell to save her children. Like she just, just sinks. Because she knows like if I can't get the orb, I might as well die. Because I can't live without my kids, so she just right. disappears. And uh, oh, and it's also so hot inside of my thing. I gotta I take better. these off. <laughs> it's, just, it's even hotter than it was before. <laughs> so the uh, so the Cree and the Shi'ar immediately start like arguing with each other because like I don't see Reed, like I don't see the guy. We, we <laughs> broke into his thing. We're gonna roll in and take shit over. But I don't see. He's the not freak. even here. Yeah, and then Spider-Man webs Ronan the accuser in the face, and the Avengers arrive. So the real Avengers are here, not like the new ones with like Silver Surfer and stuff, like Spider-Man and Captain America. And they're here because when they were on Earth, remember T'Challa couldn't call Reed because the communication went down. Right. And when it was gone for when it was down for too long, basically T'Challa like rallied the Avengers together and they all put on their old costumes and they jumped on board. They hopped the shuttle and they went to the satellite. Right. Let's just go right check it out. Yeah, well, the goals, as they do. Reed's communications don't just go. They don't. Down. He, he well, he <laughs> won't stop calling. Like he is a workaholic. Like he works thirty-six-hour days. Yeah, and so, it's not like his Wi-Fi is <laughs> ever gonna be, just like drop. Even you know? if it did, it would only be for like a microsecond right. before, he figured, before he outthought <laughs> Wi-Fi. Yeah, if it doesn't come back up, that means there's a problem. Problem. Exactly. So uh, what then we good get friends. So then we get a dope yeah. fight between like the Avengers, which is not really. I mean, it's like it's Luke Cage, it's She Hulk, it's T'Challa, it's yeah. Daredevil. The Avengers, too. it as much as like everyone's been an Avenger, so it could be anybody. Exactly. Reed Richards has been an Avenger. So they uh, they they're gonna fight. You know, the Kree and the Shi'ar. I'm like, sweet. I want to see that. That's uh, cool. So on the other side of the satellite, where the entrance to the negative zone is, in like Reed's lab. Uh, Johnny and Ben and Lockjaw teleport in there. And but he didn't build the teleport yet, they, but Lockjaw can just Because they were still on their way, and it was like from Mars to the satellite, it's gonna take forever. Mm. So they were like, we, we, we don't have time. So they like push Lockjaw to the limit, Lockjaw <laughs> passes out, and then John, and, and so Johnny and uh, Thing are like, all right, stretch us in the negative zone. We've done this before. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So they immediately, like, they grab, like, their, like, packs that can propel them through the negative zone and get them back to, like, the entrance to the portals. Like, they're just like, all right, we assume the stretch is in the negative zone, let's just go. And uh, they're like, but once we get there, like, it's a, it's a huge, it's another universe. Like, how are we going to find him? And Johnny's like, the dude's been working with the negative zone. He's been working by, like, an open window to the negative zone for, like, the past, like, 25 years. Like, he always prepares for inevitabilities. It would is, he 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 would prepare for an eventuality that like maybe he might get accidentally sucked into the mega zone. He has a personal transponder on there, like a locator. Mm. So they just turn it on, they look for him, and they find him. Okay. So Johnny and uh, Ben fly around the mega zone looking for Reed. Meanwhile. Uh, Diablo and the Mad Thinker are going to hatch more schemes. Oh, go with them. Actually, yeah. they were arguing with each other about like who was actually more effective and useful in their <laughs> goop plan. Right. When the Avengers that are spacefaring show up and kick their ass and take their shit. I feel like you kind of wasted Thor on these two guys. Like, not really necessary. Like, he might have been one. Oh, I mean, Vision showed up first, and he's like, "Ha ha!" And they're like, "Oh, we'll beat you, Vision." And he's like, "I've got Thor." But before <laughs> Thor and Iron Man can stop Diablo and the Mad Thinker, the Mad Thinker's like. Behold my unstoppable man droids. Like I love that he has to say like a classic line. And then his like his his unthinking robots show up and um, oh you know Thor like tore a hole open in their ship, mm-hmm. but they all have their like you know their their, their pit boys on them. Right. And uh, yeah, and Vision's like yeah I took them all off of you. So unless you want to get sucked out into space, just stop it. And they're like oh okay. All right, you got it. <laughs> so in Tibet, where Doctor Strange actually has been the entire time with his daughter Clea, and they've set up shop, and they have their whole like, you know, facility cult or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hesitate to call it a cult. The cult of two. But no, they have people. They have followers. Oh, they followers. Yeah, people okay. who don't take the the yeah. Methuselah formula. It's technically right. a death cult. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's literally a death. Strange's cult. like I'd be very hesitant to call it a death cult. <laughs> no, but it is a death but cult. But it is death cult. But it is a group. But it is a small contingent of followers who have a very strong belief, and they will die. Yeah, they have a strong. Uh, Fundamental desire belief. to maintain their goal death. is specifically to die. It's the one thing yeah. they're fighting for. It's the only right? thing that unites them as a group mm. is their desire to die. 
Yeah, that is that is kind of a complicated situation, isn't it? <laughs> that doesn't seem that complicated to me, Doc. <laughs> Mindo Eraso! It's a real spell! So anyway, Sue shows up, and she's like, I have the orb. Like, I got it. And this is where we establish that she's been talking to them for, like, a long time. Oh. And I'm like, wait, what? I mean, like, I buy it, because right. where would Sue even find out about the orb of Nemnon? <laughs> but what? Okay. What is, is this part of the goal of undoing yes. the Methuselah formula? No, or? no, 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 no. Oh, okay. No, no, no. No, it's just the, Doctor Strange just like, yeah, I'll help Sue. No. So the orb has properties that they can use, that, that Sue wants to manipulate to save her children. Mm. And orbs of okay. whatever the hell are really save. Doctor Strange's purview. Save doesn't really come into it. It it's does. It's bring them back to life. You'll see. Unless so, she's in a place. But Doctor Strange is like, I kind of like have the patent on mystical orbs of whatever the hell that can do gobbledygook. Uh -huh. So you gotta go through me. It, like, I know about that kind of stuff. So like, right. she's like, Basically, I'm gonna kick you in the mystical orbs. I just text you trying to use that orb without talking to me. I'm just gonna stop it from working. Well, and that's the thing. He's like, she's like, I got it. So are you gonna help me or what? And Doc's like, so if I don't help you, you're still going to use it. She's like, to the best of my ability, which is to say, it'd be like a child fumbling with a gun. Like, <laughs> so, you know, it's your move, Doc. And he's like, oh, okay. But also, this is clearly like him talking to Clea when he was talking about like the love of a child and how powerful that can be. Uh. But uh, he's like, yeah, so, okay, we're gonna do this. And meanwhile, oh, don't forget that the like, the Galactic Council's also been talking. The, one of the big problems with, the, with, with Earth is that like, there was this, there's this wave that came from Earth. And they're like, what is a, going on? A wave? You know, like, a, like a big wave, like a signal of some kind. And they're like, what's going on? Like, Earth is up to some crazy shit. And I don't know what it is, but we need to stop them. And, and the Galactic Council's like, I have a piece of paper that says they're not going to do anything. So I, I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> so there, there is some kind of like justification for the Kree and Shi'ar's right. problem. Right. They're like, we have to stop them before something really bad happens. Yes. Yeah. And we know that it will because we're in a Marvel comic. Right. So, uh, you know, Reed like is... they're the bad guys, but they're also correct, though. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, but they're not, because they're, the trigger is actually just this wave from the story that's happening in the reading. Uh, and we're happy that we're the result of the wave anyway. <laughs> so, uh, okay. you know, Reed is at Annihilus' mercy when uh, the Fantastic Four, or rather two, show up to help him. And uh, so, you know... Johnny and Ben are here. They're like, hey, Reed, we got your jetpack. Let's go. Let's let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, you came here and you came into the anachronism to save me. How'd you even know? And I like, it's fine. And like, it's, it's but Annihilus. And, and Ben's like, yeah, I took his special control rod, that thing he uses that makes him powerful. I just threw it over there. It's fine. <laughs> and also, I'm really powerful. And he just punches Annihilus like across the room. And also, nice. pants him. Yeah. <laughs> so then they leave and they leave Clert there. Like, add, that's enough of that. Huh. And so they leave. Meanwhile, there's an awesome, fun, silly slap fight of superheroes just like beating the hell out of each other. They're all like, I don't even know what we're doing. Right. What, like, what is this happening? Like we showed up because we couldn't call Reed and then the Kree and, and, and the Shi'ar attacked us. So <laughs> I guess we're defending ourselves. And they're like, and Daredevil's like, hey. and, and I also, I, I, I either smell or heard something from the other side. Like there's been a change in air pressure in the airlock. So we got more company coming and it's the Inhumans. Which, of course, wouldn't help or turn the tide in any way because they suck. But, like, you know, let's pretend like that's a triumphant moment. And, and so Silver Surfer's there, too. Oh, hey! Now yeah. that's a heavy oh, hitter. Rad's here. Sweet. <laughs> well, you could go in human royal family. We're fine. The Silver Surfer's here. Reed is like, damn my pride. Like, I thought I could use the negative zone. But I should have known the negative zone is a bullshit place. Yeah, with nothing a good crap. comes so from the negative zone. I'm just going to self-destruct the negative zone. Like, not the whole... Reality, but like the the, the thing connection to it. Yeah, my connection to it. No, it, destroy the whole thing. Yeah, just yeah. blow it all. Get up. rid of it. Destroy. Right, you got fine. two villains in there. It's fine. Uh, no, like I'm gonna blow up the thing, and it's gonna be a timed, like self destruct mechanism. You know, so it's got tension in it. How about you just do it now? Right, just set it off. He's like, nope. So I'm gonna set it for an hour, and I'm gonna blow it up. And it's like, why don't you set it for right the fuck now? Right. No, so, we live forever. An hour's like nothing now. Exactly. That is like a minute. <laughs> <laughs> what are you so kind of hurry? <laughs> yeah. Whoa. You gotta learn to stop. Oh, what do you mean now? Yeah. Now that's insane. Yeah, that's old world thinking. So Reed sets the self destruct when Clea, Doctor Strange, and Sue teleport in, and then Sue encases Reed, Ben, and Johnny in a force field, and says, "I can suck the air out of here and kill all of you if you intercede." And they're all like, "Whoa, whoa, like, whoa, you know, whoa. And, whoa! What are you talking about, Sue?" <laughs> it's like, 
And they're like, why are you doing this? And she's like, I will not let anyone stop me. Like, don't get in my way. Why would I want to? I don't understand. Well, because, you know, Reed's a realist. and Maybe wants... you'll explain something well, instead of just threatening us. Because when they talked to Reed, like when Reed talked about like the status quo of Doctor Strange, he's like, I don't have time to think about like magic. Like, I don't, know, I don't have time to think about crystals. I don't have time and, to think about shit that doesn't make sense to me. Or doesn't matter. Or <laughs> isn't relevant. Mm -hmm. Like, if people want to, like, not live forever, that's on them. But I'm not going to, like, take stock in how they feel or what they... Right, believe. I'm not going to engage with that, like, insane viewpoint. So if Sue was to say, like, well, I joined their group. Not that I, I, I do want to be hot and young forever. But maybe there's something to what Doctor Strange is all about. Mm -hmm. You might use your stretchy powers to stop me. Or take right. the orb away from me. Uh, you keep talking about this orb, like I know what that means. No, no, no it's just the, she has this magic orb. I got the magic orb. I got the orb, though. So, the you orb, know. The orb of Num Num. <laughs> Num Num? Meow Meow? Yeah. The orb of delicious Num Nums. Diablo and the Mad Thinker, who are now in the S.H.I.E.L.D. arc and are being interrogated. Uh, is the Mad Thinker's hand just glued to his chin? He's just always doing this. Why it's is like, he still we in this get book? It. Oh, because we need, because we need to know what happened to them. What? They only get one panel. Okay. They don't matter. Well, no. What but arc is doing? They never matter. mattered. They never did. But like, they serve no, one they, plot they, purpose. Well, and they were hired by the Kree and the Shi'ar to make goop monsters to take them. I know, but they to the, justify a full-scale invasion of Earth by the Galactic Council and their respective empires. And so the Kree and Shi'ar empires, the entire might of their empires, arrive to in, to to punish the Earth so for violating the quarantine. So Earth is screwed. There's no fixing this. <laughs> That's right. Earth is totally effed by this. This is the end. This is the end. The end of everything and why, the Fantastic Four. Why did they send like one? Sh oh, because they could only get one through before. Yeah, before okay. they like, yeah. And now I guess the barriers. Well, you broke the bar. You. We already told them. We we the the Kree and the Shi'ar told the Galactic Council like we have proof that they that they violated the quarantine. And now we're gonna go in there and spank their asses. So the only way this is gonna end satisfyingly for me. <laughs> yeah. You, 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 is if they bring Valeria and Franklin back. Uh -huh. just and so then Franklin they, goes, no! No, just so that they can all die together oh, as yes. a family. Yeah, that'd be, that would be a very good ending. They'll go for back story. in time to the moment that they died and like stop it from happening. So, like, but then we won't get to have this utopia! Yeah, that's true. That's not what happens. Oh, no. okay. So they go to the area where Valeria and Franklin died because it's left as some kind of a creepy memorial. Like it's just an area yeah. of the asteroid that like they don't, it, it's also just like, I, I assume that Reed just kind of like closed the door and just doesn't go in there. Yeah. Uh, but they go in there and- He's like, Sue, why are you bringing us here? Yes. And yeah. she's like, they didn't die. And he's like, Sue, oh my God, you've been hanging oh out with Dr. Strange. Sue. Like, no. Nah. And she's like, no, 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 no. They didn't die. They came to the future. They time traveled uh. to when I decide to open the portal and get them here. Uh, okay. And Valeria told me by using her illusion powers to create the like the, the, the moon language that would lead her to the orb of Nemnon that would lead them to being able to go back. Because time travel isn't like a thing we can do effectively. Mm -hmm. we, 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 I mean, Doctor Strange can. But magic time travel is different. We're not messing with the timeline. They disappeared at that moment. Right. Because they never died, they went into here. the future. Yeah. That's what happened. And we have to live with that. Like, the trauma of having lost them, that, that happened. All that happened. But they just came here instead of into oblivion. Mm -hmm. Franklin did that? No. 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 No one did no that. No one did that. They're about They're to about do it. They're about to do it with They're the orb. They're about to summon them from the past to now. And Valeria saw that, that if that they didn't do that, the whole family would have been killed. Uh. So Valeria chose to leap in with Franklin and cast the illusion that showed the orb that led them down this path. She's like, we're not gonna die. We're just going to the future. So for them, they just jump in to save their family and then their family is like a couple of years older than they were when they started. Mm -hmm. That for them, there's no difference in time. Which I was like, that's kind of awesome. Yeah. I love that use of time travel. Yeah. Uh, but Reed is like, please, like he's just so broke. He's like, no, Ru Sue, that's not how that works. That's not how anything works. <laughs> I, I, I like uh, the fact that it's to only time travel one way. Yes, yes. We're not going back and preventing it from happening. It always did happen. It's a closed loop. Mm -hmm. And so basically, 
Sue begs for them to trust her. And so she opens the portal. The Fantastic Four all put their hands in. Sue opens the portal. Reed immediately grabs it and be like, no! Yeah. No! And he <laughs> throws them all into space. Uh, so then, you know, yeah, like, uh, there's pandemonium on the other end of the asteroid. Uh, meanwhile, the other Avengers and Reed Thor... Reed just gets on intercom. Hey, get everyone. <laughs> knock it off. Knock it off. <laughs> just, I'm going to start turning off atmospheres, <laughs> until, like, uh, you know, deck at a time until we get to me. So, wait a minute, they're about to bring their children into the future, which is about to be overwhelmed by an invasion. Yes. Well, they don't know about the, well, Reed doesn't know about the invasion right now. All that matters is this is the this is the crucial juncture point where we need to bring our children back. Right. Or rather, Sue knows that. Right. So the Avengers in space with the shield arc are fighting the Armada or trying to hold it back. Uh, <laughs> One I mean, ship against an entire uh, Yeah, until an entire, invasion. until two fleets. Yeah. Uh, so Strange helps to open the orb and activate it and we start to see the echoes of what was occurring when the children died with doom. Mm. And so uh, they use it and boom, that orb activation sends the wave through time that actually also is the the wave that the- The so Kree and the- The Kree and the Skrulls that everybody saw. They felt. Right, right, okay. And it went back in time. When they get Franklin and Valera, don't forget a third member of that cadre was, was also Doom's here too. <laughs> and he's like, whoa, what's going on here? Oh, changing your, your, your looks. Like, you cutting your hair, Sue, isn't gonna change my opinion. And they're like, hey, it's the future. And I'm like, you just did that. Like, the opening of this was, hey, it's the future. I know you just woke up, but like, it's better. And it's like, hey, it's actually way it's further in the, future. in the future. It's even more better than it was, except for the invasion. That's but what made me crazy. <laughs> even through all that, Sue's still like, thank you for noticing. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we yeah. didn't say shit. I haven't seen you. So well, you, you saw me now, you could have said you like the hair. But they're just like, dude, knock it off. And like Johnny's, be everyone's better at what they do. Right. And so Johnny's like, dude, just knock it oh, off, man. Dude, just stop. And just... he's like, never, no! Ah! <laughs> this is horrible! <laughs> Don't you look at me! This is even worse than before! <laughs> yes. The Avengers and the shield carrier are overwhelmed. Uh, there is actually a ship that's in one of these fleets, I think it's the Shi'ar, where one of their ships is just a big effing gun. And I, I've seen this before, so this is not just like Davis mm. swing over the fences. It's just like, it's a planet blaster. They're just like, we're just gonna blow up the Earth. <laughs> Screw an invasion. We're just coming here, we're gonna blow it up. And right before they do, Galactus arrives. <laughs> and says, any who threatened this solar system shall make an enemy of Galactus. Whoa, well he broke the treaty. <laughs> <laughs> Enforce it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't sign any treaty. Yeah. I am a treaty. So then, uh, so I'm everyone's like, your ass. everyone's like, oh shit, and they just turn around and leave. Yeah. Now Earth is under the protection of Galactus. <laughs> New treaty. Uh, Galactus <laughs> says we can go wherever we want, whenever we want to. Yeah, but you can't do dick about it. And you can't do dick it. or you'll die, or we'll eat your planet. <laughs> and I'm like, that is so in keeping with the Fantastic Four. That, that like, we didn't, he used to need an ultimate nullifier. Now he is one. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I could selectively destroy any planet. Yep. I'd just be like Galactus. Galactus. Uh, uh, the, the the Kree were uh, they were they were making me like scared. I was scared. I was I was really I was really scared that they were gonna the you Kree, know, hurt us. The Kree had notes for my new interstellar <laughs> transport module, and uh, I don't like that bad energy. Yeah, I think they uh, <laughs> might be cooking something up. I think you better go uh, eat them. <laughs> yep. So the Fantastic Four are battling Doom again, yeah. and uh, it's just desperate and terrible. And, you know, they're just like, Doom's like, I'll never be part of this world. I hate you. Never, Doom! And uh, so they're they're battling, and, and their battle ends up near the negative zone machine. Uh. And he's like, a negative zone machine? This must be a crucial nexus for all of your technology, and it will be mine. And so he runs to it, and Reed's like, stop it! And so he jumps into the negative zone projector, and then it explodes. <laughs> Because the whole thing took an hour, and uh, so <laughs> it explodes Doom, right as it right as he goes in. It the explodes. Countdown yep, it hits zero. No, it wasn't a countdown. John was just over there being like, boop, boop. <laughs> yep, uh, I know what this is, <laughs> and uh, so it just explodes, and Doom's gone in the negative zone. That's amazing. The Armada leaves, and Galactus just kind of stands three there. Three for one. That's fantastic. Exactly. Everyone's on like all the outside Avengers, all the sh all the space Avengers are like on the ship of the Ark. They're like, um, does anybody want to ask like why Galactus <laughs> did that? And the watch is just like. <laughs> like a Mr. Miyagi, just like, yeah. Everybody gets one. Uh, I, the Inhumans are the first ones to reach the Fantastic Four and like dig them out of the 
rubble of the explosion from the negative zone projector. Crystal mm. uh, implies she's gonna bang the shit out of Johnny. And uh, then the Avengers, like the classic old school Avengers show up and they're like, hey, the Fantastic Four are back again, way to go. Ah, it was great to punch bad guys again. It felt great to be useful. Mm -hmm. You know, the children. Of course, for them, it's been, they have no trauma. Right, nothing's happened. Nothing's happened to, to them. them. And the family can be like, yay. Hey. So everybody just kind of hugs and, you know, talks about how great that was. And Man, they are in for a world change. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah but it's better everyone than ever. they knew is alive. And they're still alive exactly because were. nobody's died. Yeah, and like they have fun, like nieces and nephews, because, <laughs> you know, Ben has a bunch of kids and they're around their age. Right. Uh, so Valeria reminds Doctor Strange to get rid of the orb, lest anybody fuck around with time again. And he's like, good call. I need to be lectured by yeah. a child. Good call. I think I'll just keep this in yeah. my robes. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I, I know what to do with that ore, but put in building with the, the rest ultimate of my nullifier stuff. <laughs> and all my other like weapons and exactly. stuff. Exactly. It just ends like raiders. Reed tries to explain to Valeria, you know you're in the future right now. Like, I'm sorry that we did that to you. So you She's lost like, all that like, time. No, no, I know because I had that dream about being in the future. I knew about all this was going to happen. I knew that was where the end was going to happen. And Reed's like, the end? And she says, the end of all the crises and dangers so we can just be a family now. Mm. It's like, oh, the end. Oh, oh that's, that's how they the make end. it the end. Yeah. And then the epilogue of the story, because that's it. It's just like, oh, that's nice. In the negative zone, <laughs> we just see the thunderous chorus of these hordes of Annihilus yelling doom as doom raises aloft the severed head of Annihilus. <laughs> and I vividly recall reading this for the first time and just going, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like... That is awesome. That's so cool. <laughs> like Doom leading the annihilation wave with Clert, Clert at his beck and call. Like, this is awesome. <laughs> and I'm like, that's really cool. Like, what a cool story. Is it is it ridiculously circuitous? Yes. Yes. It but is. like, but and it all, but I really appreciate that like most of it all just feeds into itself. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's, there's, it doesn't really go off the it never goes off the rails. No, it's like the, it's it like the skirts best kind them. Of, it's like the best kind of roller coaster. You know, it's like <laughs> right at the, the second arc, you're like, I think I may be in danger. And then <laughs> you have another fun time. Yeah. And then you're suddenly back oh, at port. Okay. Like, oh, that was okay. You got me. You just remember the good parts. Right. Yeah, the, and he uh, even threw in like he's like, here's Daredevil too, and Captain America. And yeah, I got to draw all of them. I got to draw them all, and no filthy mutants. <laughs> Mutant war, <laughs> but hey, like you could, and Alan Davis, like dude, this is 2006. Like, come on. First of all, I want to see what happens. Like, give me Doom with the Annihilation Wave, but also you could do a prequel if you want to draw more mutants. You could do the Mutant War. I love to see the Mutant War. Yeah. Whatever yeah, the yeah. hell that means. It's gonna be sad. It'll be sad. <laughs> well, like, it has a happy ending for everybody else. For everyone else. But if you like the X-Men, it's gonna be sad. <laughs> look, look, look. All the mutants are going to die. But, but, hear me out. Yeah? Everyone else will, will have a perfect life. So, I think it's a fair trade. I think so. <laughs> and maybe, I mean, like, you could argue a couple of X-Men made. Yeah, and they're just right. elsewhere. Yeah, we just don't hear about it. It's just like the mutants are destroyed, but like two but people. But like Wolverine's are... still there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, I, I, I'm just living in the woods. Yeah, he's done. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, maybe, maybe he devolves into his 90s version with no nose. Like, who knows? <laughs> but uh, but yeah. It... No, he's just like, I, I saw a mutant war. I'm out. I'm good. I'm out. Gene's dead. I don't have a school. Oh, no, no more <laughs> mutants. I'm not a mutant. I'm just a crazy guy that lives in the woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just a survivalist. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not Logan. I'm just some guy that also takes a pill and doesn't age. Listen, if, yeah, it's true. Like if I just grow my hair out, no one will recognize me. I will look like cousin it, but it's still, you know. <laughs> but yeah, and, and Dave is he's really. Just, he just becomes like a mini Sasquatch. Yeah, he's just brr, he just becomes an urban legend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just smaller. <laughs> or in the like, I mean, they could have. He could have. He could have really been like, oh yeah, like they fight a Wendigo and it's Wolverine and it's like, what, what is that? What happened in the mutant war that made Wolverine eat a person? Like, you know, I don't know. Uh, but also, can Wolverine Wendigo? Because it was, what is, it is, is Wendigoism an affliction? Like, can you heal from I mean, being a Wendigo? It's a curse. It's a curse, it's a curse right? But, but, but was it implied Wolverine has been there was a by way? vampires, and that also is a curse, and that's magic. Is vampirism is magic? magic? No, but there, there is, is no a, magic. There is a magic magical. Is just... There is a magical formula called the Montesi formula that will kill all vampires. That's magic. Just just, ma just vampires. Maybe they just call it magic, and it's really like a like a virus. I mean, like a it, retrovirus it, that selectively targets all the, right, well, you know co coagulant. Yeah. Blah, all right, blah, keep blah. your pitches to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, I got that shit from Blade. Blade yeah. two or three talked about it, like insane shit like that. Yes, that's, Blade. that's Marvel. So yeah, yeah, that is Marvel. Yeah, that's true. They tried to make it all sciency. Oh, because they would lose you. I love this. I remember, I was just like, this yeah, is really cool. cool. How fun! It ends well. It One ends well, and, it's, and it ends. ends. You know, but also uh, we can't help ourselves. Here's a, here's a little post credit scene that implies that it's not. But also, who cares? Well, yeah, it's so like well, he just he just runs lives there the now. negative zone. Yeah, yeah, he runs the negative zone. What well, do I do here? Uh, I don't know, but we got cable. Oh, no, that's Mole Man. I'm sorry, that's Mole Man. <laughs> we do not have cable, I'm sorry. Oh, no! Fools! I mean, no, Doom, like, ruling the negative zone, I mean, like, you know, it's been a thousand years. He'll find a way out. He'll, yeah. he will, he'll need to leave. Yeah. And it does say another adventure is beginning here, so, like, yeah. it implies that this is the start of a story where he's going to come back and be a With problem. With a vengeance. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm yeah, down. Yeah, but we never get it. No. 2006? I think it's over. Yeah, I mean, what are you gonna do? That's gonna be whatever a you come up with this. is better than that. Yeah, although I mean, Alan Davis did make this, so I'm down if he wants to do it again. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, then that's for the end, and what an end! It's it may be the best, the end. It's pretty good. You mean because the kids weren't in it the whole time? <laughs> I know. I, I like the choices you don't like made the kids. throughout. Yes, yes. Really judicious and smart decisions being made. I mean, I, you got to take Franklin off the table you somehow. You well, Especially he if he's already been aged to the point where he's a teenager. Well, remember, it's like, well, now he should be able to do literally anything. Yeah, but this is this is one of those things where it's like, we didn't know he was a god. Like, when he first mm, showed up, right. he could do stuff, but we didn't even want to define what those were. So, right. you know, I mean, Valeria wasn't even alive when she was first invented. <laughs> So if it's available anywhere, I'll put it in the comments. Otherwise, you can pick it up elsewhere. It's 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 it, they printed a lot of these. Oh, you can pick it up elsewhere. Oh, elsewhere, oh. which is almost like an else worlds, because that's what this basically is. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you guys next week with another episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Keep reading. I'd like it if there was a joke at the end. They wouldn't do this where Sue is like, finally, I can stop pretending I give a shit about archaeology. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. I was just all just one big plan, Con. yeah, to 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 get my children back. Yeah, it's I mean, so it was. boring. I mean, I'm Spent sure that she like likes twenty years of my life. Yeah, pretending. Well, when that I had an academic interest, <laughs> it's horribly boring subject. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, it is going to be boring. I'm sure she found some joy. I'm sure there were some moments that re that gave her some yeah. measure of completion. But at the same time, like, yeah, most of archaeology is done in the library with research and reading. It's it's not a it's not very active. Yeah. It's not or a you're lot just of... digging a hole and there's just nothing in it. Oh, there was nothing here. Well, I guess we can go three inches to the left and keep going. <laughs> do it all over again. Meticulously. Well, it took me eight months to do that. Well, you gotta understand, I have to go centimeter by centimeter down. I don't want to disturb anything. Well, it's true. You gotta be careful, yeah. too. You gotta just dig. Digging is disruptive and violent. <laughs>